Hello everyone and welcome. It is Tuesday evening, which means it is time for another edition of the High Roller Super Millions played over at, Choose, at uh, GG Poker. Tuesday evening for the Central Europeans, it is of course. For Nano, it's already Wednesday morning. Nano Noko, as always, you're with me. How are you doing this week, mate? Doing good, you know, just chilling, relaxing, waiting for today, you know, of course. And uh, have, gonna have fun with the Super Millions because it's always been a... Uh, it's getting bigger and bigger as usual and uh you know we always see the familiar faces and new faces and uh it's good to be good to be back roddy yep it is week 16 already last week we had an absolutely epic heads up match we'll talk a little bit about that soon uh but yeah it's been going on for 16 weeks now already which is awesome this tournament obviously always takes place on the sunday evening that's when it opens and everybody will play down till the final nine I followed the action a little bit live on Sunday, had a couple tables open because I saw Limitless was playing again. Elki made a late sign up as well. He wasn't in it in the very beginning. Uh, he did finish in the money, unfortunately he didn't make it to the final table. But yeah, I, I was excited as well. Like last week I had so much fun. I was like, all right, this time I want to follow some of the action live and also see how some of the early chip leaders uh, would perform like a couple hours into the tournament and recognize a couple names of people that I've maybe played on the table with at like the, for instance, the Bounty Hunters $210 Beat the Pros event we do on Saturdays these days, which is a really fun one as well. And I gotta say, I'm pretty surprised with the lineup we have when it comes to the final table tonight. We have eight new faces this time, Nana. Yeah, well, speaking of railing, I do want to tell you that the guy who final table bubbled was actually the European, right? I uh, saw Samuel Vostin. Uh, so, you know, it would have been cool to see him back again at another final table. But like you said, it's a little bit surprising who's at this final table just because it's a lot of just new faces. Um, but on one side note, you did get one request in. Do you know what that is? I know. Of course emotes. I know what it is. The Elky emote. You know, it's really funny, Nano, because it was... I don't know if it was Sunday evening or it was Monday morning, but they said we'll have a maintenance with a couple of cool, exciting updates. And I kid you not, the moment I read that, I was like, hey, I wonder if they're going to put in the Elki emotes finally. And then after a couple of hours, I logged in and I saw Elki's Instagram post as well. He's like, woohoo, got my emotes, so sick. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't like, I really didn't have time to play at all, like yesterday and today, but I, I couldn't help myself. So I was like, all right, log in. Just open up like a Russian cast table real quick. And I was like, okay, let's take a look. So I was spamming just all the emotes, raised every hand and doing the Elki running hot and stuff. Uh, I only had like 10 minutes, but I was like, yeah, they came out well. They're really fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good to see. Um, I haven't seen them myself, so I'm hoping some of these final tablers today will use some of the Elki emotes today uh, because, you know, they're very animated. Uh, but it should be fun. Yeah, well, uh, I have a good feeling that we'll see at least one of them use it a little bit because we've seen some of the Daniel ones before and since this is brand new, I have the feeling that some people are pretty eager to bust out some LP emotes. Well, we have a lot of things to talk about and we'll kind of just talk about it throughout this show. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the nine players that we will cover tonight that have made it to the final table of the 16th edition of the High Roller Super Millions. Of course, a 10K buy in event, 2 million guaranteed. This week we had 196 players playing, which means there was an overlay as well. But these are the guys that made it. Our chip leader tonight is Nader, a high roller regular, 11 super millions appearance. His third cash has never made it to the final table though. I have to admit that now I wasn't too familiar with him, but maybe you can tell me more. Um, I don't know much about him either, but uh, you know, someone who plays a bunch of super millions and tries every time, you know, you know, some of these guys that are really good, of course, um, but not everyone can make a final table. Eventually, when Nator has made the final table, he's gonna come in with a massive chip lead. I mean, like, well, how many big blinds does he got? He's got 117 <laughs> big blinds. This might be one of the biggest chip leads, very close to that uh, Holiday, right? Who had a bunch yep. of uh, chips as well. Um, so, but uh, I'm sure he's very good. He's very aggressive, as you can, you'll see in, in this hand history. Uh, no, I'm with you. This is indeed a massive chip sack. Like, this would be big regardless of how many signups we had. But since this one was a little bit smaller than some of the other weeks we've had, for him to have 7 million chips already and 117 big blinds, which is like 50 big blinds more than the guy who comes in second in chips, yeah, that's massive. These are holiday numbers. But if there's one thing we've seen before at the High Roller Super Millions final table, I think it's safe to say that coming in as chip leader is no guarantee for a top two or a top three finish. But let's take a look. 
and one of the hands that Nator had on his journey to the final table. This is one of these hands where I'm like, check raising with, I want to say absolutely nothing. I don't really see too many blockers here. Uh, but what do you see, Neto? Exactly. It's absolutely nothing. And um, it's a very bold play because not only is he check raising uh, one, he's actually check raising two opponents that are still in the hand. It's just, it looks even more strong, but it's even more risky, right? Like when someone takes this kind of line, very often they actually have a queen too. So, you know, this is just some sick reader or just some crazy madness that work. I don't know, but if someone's making play with this and there's a chip leader, they could end this tournament real fast or distribute those chips really fast as well. Yeah, this is like, it is one of these boards where you can say it is a good board to check race, right? Because there are so many incredibly strong hands that are possible. The thing is, he wasn't holding anything that like could represent any of those strong hands. So when I saw this, I'm like, all right. Yeah, these things either work and you come into the final table as chip leader or you do bubble like three spots before the final table and then you hate yourself that you won't be covered on the Tuesday evening. This hand promises a lot of good. Not sure what to think of it, but hey, at least it's a fun one. So let's hope we'll see some of these plays tonight because that's obviously uh, what really gets us going. Second in chips, we're looking at Bert Stevens. Uh, once again, Girov Ganger, he's back. He's made it to a final table. Uh, did, actually, he wasn't. Wasn't he at the final? No, that was Grofteko. Actually, this. Oh, yeah, wow, okay. Just cash. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Girov Ganger. Well, a very big name in the online poker world. Yeah, um, you know, I, we haven't seen him at the final table, but he, he's obviously loves playing online poker, 10 million in earnings. Uh, doesn't have much GG. Uh, doesn't, well, I mean, he's played some GG, it looks like. Yeah, uh, actually, he's got a, a lot of GG wins. I was looking at his all-time <laughs> minus. He doesn't play live at all, or he really sucks at live, because he only has 7,400 uh, in live uh, tournament winnings. But regardless, uh, He's one of the best in online, you know, you, you, when you think about like some of the online crushers, they're, he, they're a bit unknown in the live scene, but online they're like big crushers, yeah. like the European is another guy like that, doesn't play much live, uh, Graftikel as well, you know, these these guys are all very good. Uh, Giraffe Ganger, from, if I remember correctly, you can follow him on Twitter and this dude like lives in like... Out in, out in the middle of nowhere, kind of. And he has like a farm. He's got like all these different animals. It's it's really right. crazy. Uh, he's just, he just loves his life and takes care of his farm. Like literally like a farm. I'm not joking. It's not like he's, he's I'm exaggerating. No, he literally has a farm with like goats, sheep and stuff like this. And uh, and he just chills and plays uh, a poker and he's got a very um, good mental game. Um, you know, he understands like the ups and downs and he's been there for a while and just really loving life. Like he probably doesn't need more money. He's just very happy where he's at, uh, but he still wants to play at the highest stakes and take care of his animals. <laughs> That's amazing. And I'm going to follow him on Twitter after this show is done, but I'm very happy to see him at the final table. I think this is really cool. It's like you say, if you watch Lex's stream, you'll see these kinds of guys make deep runs in a lot of those tournaments, the European, Graf Deco, but you'll see Giroc Ganger as well. So that's super cool. A terrifying sight for the rest of the table, by the way, because he comes in second in chips with 65 big blinds. So he's got plenty of stuff to work with. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Giraffe Ganger had on his way to the final table. And this is just a pretty sick puppy call if you ask me on the turn. That's what I take away from this hand. But what do you make of it? I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's like, usually like when you, he defends the big one, right? He check calls a pair on a fluff, which is really standard, but the turn is not standard, right? When your opponent bets really big on the turn against you in the big line and you still make this call of just mid pair, no kicker, uh, it, it's a really bold statement. Um, you know, you're basically thinking your opponent bluffs too much. Also, you know, say there's a backdoor flush draw that comes out or a flush draw on the flop. It, it kind of makes some sense. Uh, it, it does make some sense for you to maybe call again because maybe they've got some flush draws you can pick up. But this is just a pure bluff. He's catching like a queen, queen high. And, you know, this, this here of the king six, I think it could potentially be a really like GTO type call where maybe he doesn't have many aces in his range and he knows it so therefore the next best hand to call would be a king and he's kind of like forced to auto call down because it's the top of his range i don't know but these are some things that you would think about if you're playing uh but regardless it's it's uh 
you got to be worried when you, when you're multi barreling into him because uh, he, he might call you down with just king six high or just pair of kings, you know. Since obviously the race came from the bottom, there is a chance that he maybe put him on a jack right hand like jack ten or a queen jack, something among those lines. And uh, if you start believing that, you may just feel like you have to call one more time. Would have been sick if his opponent bet again on the river and he calls again though with king six, like <laughs> with a student with live on the line at that point. But yeah, an amazing call. Giraffe Ganger is just a big name in the online poker world. And I'm very excited to see how he will play at this final table tonight. That's going to be a lot of fun. Let's take a look at our next player, who is the only familiar face when it comes to final tables over at the High Rollers Super Millions. Sean Winter, he's back. He's had a couple of very deep runs, but not that one run you're really hoping for when you play these kinds of tournaments, Randy. Yeah, Sean Winter, um, you know, he primarily plays live. He, like, he plays at... Uh all the big 25Ks and higher in, in live tournaments. Like he, I believe there was a time when he was just regularly playing. At the Aria during uh, the World Series of Poker, he would just play the daily 25K and higher uh, pretty much daily. That's why he's got 15 million all-time money lists. Clearly, if you want to play those tournaments and those fields are really small, but there's just literally all the best pros playing it. Uh, you know, you got to be very good. Um, you know, he plays a super high roller bow. He's gotten second for 2.4 million. Uh, before, but you know, he hasn't done well in the Super Millions yet, but this time he's going to come in with third in chips. Uh, he got eighth place on July 5th, but he didn't have that many chips to start that one. Uh, he's a... Uh, this guy plays a little bit different than some of the other pros, and what I mean by that is that he can make some really big, bold plays uh, as bluffs in spots where you're just... Say it goes check, 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 and he would just randomly just blast it all in or something, which is nothing. That's what I remember about him. Um, yeah, he, he's going to be fun to watch, I think, with some chips. Well, take, let's take a look at one of the hands that Sean Winter had on his journey to his second final table at the High Roller Super Millions. And this is also a pretty insane play. He calls the guy who raised under the gun and goes check, 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 check. And all of a sudden, he just fires a massive bet on the river where he's like, you know what? If you don't want it, mate, I'll be the one to take it. If you check two streets, I'm the one firing. And that's a proper river bet as well. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what I was saying. Like, sometimes you're just thinking, okay, if this, you know, if it checks down to the river, I'll probably call a small bet with my, my pair of nines or, you know, maybe some ace, ace king highs or things like this, right? But when some dude just overbeds into you now, now you got to be a bit worried. And Sean Winter is that guy, right? Like, I'm sure he does this for value as well, but, you know, he's going to go for his reads. Um, you know, he calls from the small blind. He, you know, someone who's capable of making these kind of plays, right? They have uh, a lot more edge going for them post flop uh, because they, they read bet sizing well. You know, they, they know where you're at based on your actions and, you know, you're not going to get the showdown easy against Sean Winter. And if you're not going to make some call downs here, he's going to pick up um, extra pots that no one else is going to pick up. Uh, this, again, makes him very dangerous. Of course, sometimes, like, if your reads are going to go wrong, you're, you're going to lose a lot of chips. But, like, as you know, the guys who usually win the Super Millions, they're the aggressive ones that just, like, putting you to the test all the time, uh, just going all in, bluffs and, and value. Uh, not the guys who are just kind of grinding their way up to the top slowly and just trying to ladder up. They usually get like third, fourth, or fifth, you know? Yeah, well, this is not a guy who's coming for third, fourth, or fifth. It's safe to say that if things go Sean Winter's way, he can have a pretty epic run tonight. I love the hand, love the bet, love the story. Let's get it on. Let's take a look at our next player. For the people who wonder, when does it start? I should have mentioned that before we cover these nine guys, but we always have a little pre-show of 30 minutes. So for 30 minutes, we'll take a look at the nine players that have made it to the final table. And then exactly 30 minutes past eight, Central European Summertime, we'll uh, watch the cards go into the virtual era. So coming in in fourth, it's Guillaume Nolet. Uh, resides in Montreal, Canada. Someone who's had quite a bit of success on GG Poker, but even more success offline. How much can you tell us about Guillaume? Because it's the first time we see him at the final table. Yeah, um, I don't know much about Guillaume. Um, I, I, besides, he used the staking feature on his first entry, busted it, and was like, you know what, I'm in for another bullet, put in another 10k. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, but it looks like he's played 11 times, and uh, you know, good luck to this Canadian fellow. Yeah, 11 times. Somebody who definitely seems to be a fan of the High Roller Super Millions, but 
Uh, this is the first time he really makes a proper run. Take a look at one of the hands that Guillaume had on his way to this final table. As we have a uh, good old ace jack battling it out with queen jack. Neither player really connecting a whole lot with this board. Uh, makes a pretty epic call on the river though. Jeez, with ace high. Yeah, I would say that it's a, it is a, definitely a pretty epic call because like usually like you know it checks down to the river and someone bets into you like it. They kind of you look like you got ace high, right? And then they still bet into you, and you're like, do I really got a call here? But uh, you know. It, it, if you, you're sticky of ace high often enough, your opponents, uh, they can't just bet with, against you when you just check, check, check. It's kind of like, look at that Sean Winter hand before, right? You check, check, check. But if you don't call up ace high sometimes, this guy can just auto bluff every single time. And looks like Mike Watson tried to do a similar play. Didn't make it as big as Sean Winter, but got caught. Uh, so, you know, like, uh, you, you got to call up your ace high sometime. Otherwise, like, People are gonna know, they play you every single week, right? Like, oh man, this guy Narrow Hero calls me down, therefore I should just always try to bluff him off of these hands. And when you make some of these uh, lighter call downs uh, with the history, uh, you're gonna be a much tougher opponent to play against. Well, Mr. Nola comes into the final table with 31 big blinds, but I actually believe these big blinds are before the blinds go up again. And I believe whenever we start the final table, they always go up, so it's a little bit less than that but still has some room uh, to make a couple of cool moves and potentially some hero calls like this one. Promises also a lot of good. Let's take a look at our next player, the man who comes in fifth to this final table, and that is Bean Boozled. Apparently took second place in the WSOP number 66, the $800 PLO event. PLO players are always crazy. That's what you keep telling me, Nana. Well, I also tell you that Brazilians and players are very crazy, just like <laughs> Bruno Volkman, who won our last week's series, right? Uh, he was super crazy. Uh, put PLO and Brazil together, and, you know, you got a really <laughs> epic player. Um, we don't know much about this guy. It doesn't seem like he plays that high of a stakes. He, you know, he, he plays sometimes, but, you know, he's only played the Super Millions three times, uh, but he's cashed two times, which is a pretty good track record. But, you know, you can see he's got $500, $800 scores and things like this, so... I'm not too familiar with this guy at all. I'm not sure if that's a picture of himself in, in the Avatar or not, but uh, Brazilian PLO player, uh, sign me up. <laughs> they take second place apparently in the Global Millions. $100 buy-in turned into 78 k that, uh, that means that he conquered a pretty epic field to get a return like that. <laughs> Let's take a look at one of the hands that Bean Bullzold had on his journey to the final table. I feel today we've got nothing but crazy people, heroes, and just maniacs that made it to the final table based upon these hands. Because this man, it just feels like he is firing away. He's like, you know what, I've got a 10. I'm going to bet the flop, which you would say is pretty standard. Then he bets the turn as well, and he just makes a massive river bet. Well, at that point, I'm not sure if I would really still love my 10 that much. But what do you see? Well, he's definitely not value betting anymore on that river card. Uh, there's a four straight. I just, it's good to recognize when you got to turn your mid pairs into bluffs or sometimes your, your top pairs or whatever that turn into like a really bad run out because mm -hmm. it's hard for your opponent to call river bet um, unless they... Like, cause also if you look at it, the backdoor flush got there, uh, you know, there's a straight that got there. And so, you know, as you can see, it's a three bet pot. So he can represent like ace king as well. Uh, so, you know, it, it looks very strong. Um, if Even if his opponent had a hand like jack 10, queen jack, queen 10, um, it'd be tough for them to call because you gotta be thinking, okay, what is this guy? Three betting move, betting the flop, betting the turn and betting the river with. Uh, and, and it's probably pretty hard for his opponent to wake up with a nine as well in, in a three-bet pot here. Like, are they really calling the flop of pocket nines a turn of pocket? Nine? I doubt it. Um, so, you know, it's it's a really well-played hand, but, you know, it's also a courageous play because it's like a tiny bet flop, a tiny bet turn, and then a reasonable bet on the river. Um, yeah, he, it, I tell you, those Brazilian players, they're, they're crazy, man. This, this hand uh, sums it up. Look forward to watching him play, bringing some of the Brazilian PLO craziness to a final table. I think that's what we'd like to see. That's what we need as well. Take a look at our next player that has made it to the 16th final table of the High Roller Super Millions, and it's Jacob Schindler. This man just seems to crush it over a GG and in real life as well. Nano, over 5 million of earnings on GG Poker 
has played in all the Super Millions. What an absolute diehard. He's cashed in eight of them. I believe he did rebuy once to get here. Uh, but it's actually kind of crazy to see that this is only his first final table after he has played in all of them. And he seems to be relatively successful in poker. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I'm a bit surprised he has in a final table as well. But uh, you know, he's, he's he also plays in the same tournaments that uh, Sean Winter was playing live at the Aria during the World Series, like regularly. Uh, he's one of those regs, uh, very very good. Also plays all the super high roller bowls, plays the hundred Ks, um, stuff like that. Um, wouldn't surprise me. He plays cash live in, in Vegas as well. Uh, clearly very good. Twenty five million in earnings. Uh, He's one of the, the best live guys out there. You know, it's not one of those those hot names usually you hear about, but he's definitely a big crusher. Well, let's take a look at one of the hands that Jacob Schindler had on his way to his first final table with the High Roller Super Millions. And I just love the hand history here because what is, I mean, this is terrible, Mamita. This is what I think is funny. But I love that he posts an emoji. He goes for the haha before he makes the call. And these things are always in the right order, guys. So. You know, while he's making a pretty damn solid call with pocket eights, he sends the emoji first, then makes the call. And then Matthias Eibinger, who I've seen at plenty of final tables, even gives him the good old goodbye. Nano, I love it, but also a pretty sick call with pocket eights. Oh, it's really sick. And it seemed like he just knew exactly where he was at and where Eibinger was at, you know? He calls a flop bet, uh, you know, calls a turn bet. I think the flop and turn is pretty standard, but when the guy bets into you again, small blind versus big blind in the river, uh, and shoves, like, it doesn't really look like he's bluffing on his board texture, because you look like you've got at least a 10 a lot of times, and they're still putting three barrels. It's a tough call to make. Uh, he made it, but it's, it's, I think he knew exactly where he was at, because like you said, he did the emoji and did make the call, like, haha, I got you. Um, because, you know, if if he was unsure, you're more likely to see like a turn shove, right? To kind of like cut out his opponent since there's so, only so much stack to play with. But the fact that he just calls the turns like, look, I just I just know you're bluffing way too much here. You know, he can get that extra value by calling the turn and, and picking off that roof bet. Well, look forward to watching a few more hands out of uh, Jacob today. He does come in relatively short. Obviously, since we have such a dominant chip leader tonight, it means the rest of the table automatically is a little shorter than they perhaps would like to be. But hey, any one or two double ups, you've seen it plenty of times. Even the short stacks can make epic runs at these final tables. Let's take a look at our next play as we have eight minutes to go until the cards will go up in the air. Mac David. Apparently satellited his way into this event, but he has played in five high roller super millions already. Got close to a final table once on September 13th, apparently. Back then he did finish in 13th place. Uh, but that's really cool to see as well. These guys just like trying to non-stop qualify their way into this event. And then actually doing it with uh, some success as well. Yeah, um, we don't know much about this guy, uh, but he probably loves hockey like most Canadians do, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Um, he's got 97 in his name. Maybe he was born in 1997. I don't know. That's my read on it. But uh, good luck to him. 11 big blinds. Not much to work with. But uh, for someone who probably plays a bunch of $200, $300 tournaments, uh, this is, I would say, a pretty nice score to begin with regardless. You know, it's funny when you said he's probably born in 97. I was like, no way. He can't possibly be old enough to play poker then. But then I just realized I'm getting old real quick because I'm born in 87, you know. So if I hear somebody being born in 97, I'm like, who are these babies? But yeah, then you can actually just be 23 and it's obviously more than okay to play some cards. That's crazy, Nano. Time flies by. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Mac David had on his way to his very first final table. And this is one that I kind of like as well. Because whenever I have pocket nines in these situations, I always find it so scary. It's like you hope for a good flop and then the flop comes queen, king, queen, jack. And you're like, well, it can't really get any worse than that. Then you bet and you get called. You bet again, you get called to then still make a massive bet on the river against a crazy Brazilian out of all things. That's a pretty insane play, if you ask me. Yeah, this is definitely the same play, especially for a guy, right, who probably doesn't play all these 10Ks and 5Ks regularly. Um, it's a bet, bet, shove uh, with almost no equity because, you know, sometimes you hit a 10 and make a straight. The other guy's got, like, the ace, queen, ace, jack to make a straight themselves, so that would be disastrous. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a bold play. He, he Obviously, he had the worst hand on the flop, turning river, given the action to run out. I don't think his opponent's calling him down like pocket eights here. Um, 
Uh, this is just an insane play. And, uh, you know, I guess he put his opponent, look, if, if my opponent had two pair, they probably would have raised me on the flop. Probably would have raised me on the turn. The fact they did it, it doesn't seem likely, uh, you know, his opponent has it. It's just a crazy move uh, because of course he can get picked off. Uh, this is aggressive and uh, maybe he made another play later down the road. It, it didn't work and that's why he's only got 11 big blinds left. Who knows, but uh, I like what I see. All right, we've got two more players to cover. Next up is Charlie D23. I think safe to say also somebody that you're not going to be very familiar with because we don't really know who it is. No offline earnings. He's obviously playing quite a bit on GG Poker, but looking at his previous scores, doesn't necessarily always play the 10 case, but he has played the High Roller Super Millions 11 times already and has cashed in three of them. And he comes in with 11 big blinds, so obviously a, a pretty short stack, and that might even be a bit shorter than this. What he did do is win a WSOP side event, a $2,100 bounty turbo. Oh, that's uh, some of my favorite events right there, Nano. And he shipped it. So I'm going to keep my eyes open, because right now, if you're this short, you're almost playing this like a turbo, right? Because you don't really have that much time to build up a proper stack. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I, I like uh, Bounty Turbo 6 Max. Uh, like, it's fast, right? It's six-handed. Hands get around quickly. Bounty just makes it crazy. Uh, definitely very fun events to play regularly. Uh, so, you know, he did win 2K. He play, played the 2K for 120K in it. It looks like, you know, like you said, he doesn't play all the 5Ks and 10Ks regularly, right? But it seems like he doesn't like to miss the Super Millions because he's played it 11 times, uh, three caches so far, and... Um, yeah, uh, uh, good luck to this guy, but I uh, don't know much about him besides uh, well, he likes the, the apples. <laughs> what I do know is that you're going to love his hands. One of the hands at Charlie D23, uh, Norwegian. We haven't had that many Norwegians yet, by the way, at the final table. Mm. One of the hands that helped hard, uh, Charlie get to this final table is this hand with Ace Queen suited. And just once again, I don't know how our... Uh, lovely production team did it but this is just an insane call as well of course you can say that these are the kind of boards that maybe it's hard your opponent really connects with it and stuff like that but his opponent is betting over a hundred thousand chips into him on the river and he makes the call with ace queen i look at this stuff and i'm like damn like that's just uh, that, that's a really solid call my friend but what do you make out of it yeah it definitely is a solid call you know like your opponent bets into you on the turn, on the four straight. Yeah, they, they often have like an 8x, 9x, oh, some, which is, or just random bluffs here and there, and maybe some flush draws, but it's hard to make their river call uh, when they bet into you again. That's the one where you're like, gosh, man, they really look like they're milking it. Looks like they're just trying to get me to call payoff of ace highs, but sometimes you got to do that mandatory call and, and just just stick it to him, right? Like, cause this, this is just saying like, you, you bluff way too much. Uh, it's a very nice call. Um, I guess there, you know, there's way too many draws out there, but it's not easy, right? Like you'd rather call with like at least a pair here, right? Um, but uh, you know, Charlie gets it done. All right, and last but not least, a shorter stack coming into this final table. We've got a Russian, I believe, Rok Gostisa. Uh, won multiple high roller blade events, so I'm going to assume that you've got a lot more to say to the people at home about this young man than I do. Actually, not Russian, Slovenian, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know much about him either, but, you know, someone who plays the blades, uh, they're, like, usually really good because those tournaments run, like, very often, and, you know, obviously you need a big bankroll to play it. Um, so... You know, he's done well in those. Uh, he's coming in as our shortest stack with seven big blinds. He's got a lot of work to do, but five times he's played the 10K Super Millions, three caches. It's it's pretty good, man. Like, you, you're you not supposed to be uh, cashing, you know, like, what, 15% normally ITM? Like, these guys are cashing over 50%, some of them, or yeah. even higher. Some some at some point were final tabling 50% of the time, you know? Uh, but uh, regardless, uh, good luck to this dude. Seems like he's loving life. I'm loving the highlight reel of him just like rock climbing, snowboarding or skiing, whatever he's doing. Rock the seesaw, li living the life. Let's take a look at one of the hands that he had that helped him get to his very first final table over the High Roller Super Millions. Uh, check race with queens, even though there is a king on the board on the river. We've got one minute. Nano, talk to me. This is one of those blocker bet bluffs, you know? It's it's actually a really big shove because this is at blinds 5,000, 10,000, you know? And on the flop, he was like trying to get the showdown. He goes for a really tiny blocker bet. This is 
so small in a river and his opponent raises small looks like he's trying to get thin value of like the king jack or something and he jams all in he's got the blockers to the straight queen jack he knows his opponent definitely never has a queen you know holding the two queens um also based on the bet sizing uh this is just a heroic big play takes it down i think he got the best hand to fold here because i don't think a 10 would be value raising this river uh just this is cool man this is why the guy won all those 5k side events he's just obviously very heroic um and gets it done well he's gonna need some luck tonight as he does come in as the shortest stack let's take a look at our final table the 16th final table of the high roller super millions like i mentioned before this week we had 196 entries nator comes in as a dominant ship leader there's two players actually still sitting out. I hope they'll be here within the next 30 seconds, Nano. Otherwise, I'm going to get a bit nervous. So, well, uh, shall we just get it out of the way, Nano? Let's do our picking game. Who do you have for the 16th edition? I mean, my guy today, it's going to be Burt Stevens, Giraffe Ganger. The guy's got a farm. He's got to win some money to get buy some food to feed his animals, you know? Like, he's a very, very cool guy. You know, he, he's actually been under the radar on his real name for a really long time. I believe, um, he does some podcasts, uh, gets on interviews and just very mellow and cool. Uh, yeah, I think Bert Stevens is going to take it down. He's got a lot of big blinds. He's got the experience. Uh, he's going to get it done. I'm, I'm almost certain. I'm almost certain. You know, that's funny. Cause I was actually thinking between, uh, or I wasn't sure I was like debating with myself between two players and Jirov Gonger was absolutely one of them. But since you went for Jirov Gonger, I mean, it'd be lame to pick Nader cause he has so many chips and I don't know that much about him. So I'm just actually going to go with a guy that we do know can crush. And then since you went Jirov Gonger, I'll go Sean Winter. Otherwise I would have gone Jirov Gonger if you wouldn't have picked him. But since you already have him and want to keep it fun, I think Sean Winter can uh, run it up today. Like 2.3 million is a pretty decent stack. Uh, definitely has some room to make proper plays. And I think that Sean Winter will have Lady Luck on his side tonight. Yeah, well, I mean, Sean Winter is a guy, man. Like. You take him to post flop, he's going to put you to the test, right? Like, you know, check, if you remember that hand history, check, 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 1.5x over bet pot, you know? Like, he's like, yeah, I, you, you got nothing. Um, but some of these guys, they can sniff out those calls, but, you know, they, he might be ready for it, though. He might be like, oh, you think I'm one of those guys that just always over bet bluffs? And he's like, you know, second pair over bet value, you know? It's, it's going to be some sick stuff today, I think. Um, but it looks like, you know, Sean Winter, he's trying to take position on my guy, Giraffe Ganger. But Giraffe Ganger, is, he's got to decide where to move. What does Pokhara mean, or Pokhara? Pokhara, I believe, is some kind of online forum or training site. I'm not sure which one it is. I never looked into it, but some European site. Because uh, I've seen this avatar of him for a long time. Uh, so, you know, like he's... He's like, yeah, maybe you guys don't know my real name, but you definitely know my avatar. I'm happy to just show everyone. All right, guys, here we go. Shuffle up and deal. Time to begin our 16 final table. Even though we have eight new faces at this final table, and maybe some of these guys are not necessarily the biggest names in poker, we did have a lot of top-level players signing up. The European even tried twice. Limitless tried twice as well. And obviously, it's really fun to see those guys. But it's also really cool to see people that have tried. Seven, oh, eight the weeks. There's the first Elki emote already. You have it. Oh, Somebody there's another saw... one right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's good to see that these guys are having fun with the new emotes that got introduced, I believe, on Monday morning. I love them, man. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm going to spam them. I love them. We've got Queens, by the way, in the first hand for your man, Giraffe Ganger. Yeah, uh, no, I'm loving seeing the emotes. Uh, you know, whenever you get three bet in the first hand, you, you look like you're being very aggressive. So some guys like to, to kind of play back at you or whatnot, uh, being boozled. He's the guy that did that, uh, one of those crazy bluffs, triple barrels, mm -hmm. like with not very much. So, uh, you know, he's not going to love this. No, I hope for being boozled that he doesn't get too crazy. And he's like, all right, this is my time. I'm on the big stage. Let's show off the 10-8 suited. This is not the moment, mate. <laughs> Nobody wants I, to bust in the first hand. Giraffe Gang has got a real hand. Don't do it. And he doesn't do it. It would be so crazy because the reason is, if you look at it, we have... <laughs> I love these emojis. Look at the dollar signs and Elkie's sunglasses. Uh, they actually done them really well. But I wanted to say, look how short like four guys are. Three of yeah. them have less than 10 big blinds. Jacob Schindler's got 12 big blinds. Actually, what should happen is 
chip leader should be going for it. Um, and, and shorts and middle stacks and other short stacks should be waiting each other out. But if you look at it, it's B Boozled opening again, ace three offsuit. He's the guy that should be waiting, but he's like, no, I'm just gonna just bluff you guys. And McDavid folded pocket fives. That is actually also a, a wild thought. Maybe McDavid looking around and being like, well, there are so many short stacks. I don't think I really have to go for it. I do believe that our shortest stack at this final table is going to go for it here. Good old Rock Gostisa, pocket jacks. I mean, we've seen people fold pocket jacks before a pre-flop, but not of uh, six big blinds. So <laughs> I can't really see a way that he would ever fold this. And he doesn't. He so goes for it. It's going to get through. Get Can through. you believe that? Yeah. yeah, this is amazing. This is like, you know, when you're, you have two jacks here, this big stack, you actually kind of want to, a small stack, you want to get called, right? But you're like, yeah. wow. Everyone folded. I'm surprised. Ideally, buy uh, like an ace 10, ace 9, or even an ace 5, ace 4, Ooh. that kind of stuff. This could be bad for Giraffe Ganger. Yeah, did I curse him? Because uh, he's, <laughs> he's got the ace jack against two aces. Um, I want, I'm curious to what Gilliam's going to do. Is he, is he going to flat two aces or just three bet it all in? Uh, the thing is, if he just flats, it, it does look suspicious too. Uh, but maybe he can kind of look like he's got two eights or two nines. He looks like he is going to go for the three bet, but I think uh, it does still look really strong. Yeah. Especially with this many short stack at the table as well, and it's from a relatively early position, right? I mean, uh, the, the hijack there, it's like, you're not doing that with a mediocre hand. Nobody's ever going to do something like that with a wild hand, like ace 10 or like, no. Most of the time when you see three bets there, especially at a final table with this many short stacks in play, it's it screams a lot of strength. Well, uh, Rock here, he's got pocket fours in the big blind and no stack. I think he's better off calling and seeing a flop and maybe just open shipping a you know a low kind of board uh, because he doesn't have fold equity if he shoves right now, uh, but maybe he can deny his opponent equity if the a reasonable flop comes out. It doesn't have to be like a set or a straight draw, but just something that doesn't hit an early position raise. You know, like you don't want to see the ace or king on the board. Can we talk about being boozled, by the way, opening up ace eight suited <laughs> under the gun plus one? Like being He's boozled came three here hands. to play. <laughs> he gets involved in every hand. This Brazilian really did came to play. Uh, we wow, see the, the fault the of pocket fours. I, I, I agree with you. I would love to see a call. And if the board is just like low, let's say you flop a gut shot perhaps with your fours or an open ender or like anything among this line, like I would have just liked to see him go for it then. But I feel like if you're this short, I'd like to see that, pay that one extra big blind and see a flop. Well, I'll tell you what he was thinking is, look, I just paid the big blind, the small blind, McDavid's coming around, Charlie's coming around, maybe they'll bust first. Maybe that's the proper play, you know, go for some pay jumps. I um, <laughs> love these LK emojis. Uh, but regardless, Bean Boozled has been opening so much, and you got, man, he only had 20 big blinds to start this FT. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, like, it's kind of weird because we haven't seen, you know, Nader open, Nate open a hand yet. Um, plays, you know, he just fold again and cut off, which is fine. Yeah, maybe he's like, I've seen these chip leaders fall and fall again at these final tables. Maybe he's gone over a couple of the VODs of our previous weeks, and he's like, you know what? That ain't going to happen to me. There's no way I'm ever going to bust in seventh or sixth here. Like, if I, uh, I can always start dominating a bit later, maybe after the blinds go up as well. This, I'm actually really surprised to see Sean Winter just call here with a 10. What do you make of that, Nano? Because I would have loved to see him at least race, or maybe even as crazy as shoving. Um, yeah, I think he's going for the limp jam. It would make okay. sense if he's not going for the four two sauce. Bean boozled, man. Yeah, like he's guys. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's crazy. If you knew how Bean boozled was playing right now, you would definitely limp jam him because, like, it's just an auto yeah. race. Um, looks like he's going for the more passive play. I think the main reason is they have a similar stack. So if he was to lose all his chips to Bean boozled in one hand, he could bust before all of these guys who are so short. So I definitely think a limp call is fine. I think the limp jam may be more normal if everyone else didn't have such a short stack. Um, or if he had more chips, he probably would just open raise or just open, you know, the thing is it's just very dangerous. But he's got top pair here. Being boozled, it's got, it's got nothing. And the thing is when someone limp calls you in a small blind, this board kind of hits them a bit. This guy is just crazy. 
Well, Sean Winter will at least make the call here on the flop. I just can't really see a world where you would ever flop top pair, top kicker there. He's playing it very slow. He's either trying to uh, make sure that Bean Boozer hangs himself, or he's legitimately a bit worried about the things that Bean Boozer could have. Jack on the turn, how would you feel about it if you're in Sean Winter's position right now? Because I don't know. I'd be a bit worried, obviously, because Bean Boozled is crazy, and I just don't know where I'm really at. But what do you make of it? I I, I don't know. I don't think a, a call of an ace. Oh man, it just looks like a, a river card that Bean Boozled might want to go. I think the ace ten, if it was to get face another bet, might even have to fold the turn, given how strong the ICM pressure is right now with all these short stacks. And it's just, a, it would be such a bad card to call on because, like, your opponent would have so much equity against you. Um, but regardless, is Bean Boozled going to go for it? He knows he's got four high. It's How the, crazy the... are you? Oh, okay. He okay, did it. okay. <laughs> this is Everyone almost embarrassing like... as well, you know, because now the yeah. entire table sees your hands and you're like, well, <laughs> uh, I'll admit it, guys. I've been raising garbage so far. Yeah, he's got, he's got no respect. Right? Everyone's thinking, like, Man, he's been opening a lot since we started this final table. He's probably just getting a hot run of cards, aces and kings all the time. He's playing a four deuce offsuit. I wonder what Rock is going to do here, because we saw him fold pocket fours in the big blind and will immediately fold the pocket sixes as well. So it doesn't seem to be a very big fan of the small pockets. It seems like uh, Guillaume Nolet is going to get it done here with his under the gun race of pocket eights. I got to say, if I have a pocket eights under the gun and I see everybody fold to me, I'm pretty okay with that, especially at the final table. Just take that big blind, take that small blind. The antis is like, all right. The last thing you ever want to see is get three bad, and then you have somebody else who's cold calling. You're like, oh no, like I suddenly hate my hand. Yeah, I agree with you, but I think it is. I'm, I was right about Rock. He's just waiting for McDavid and Charlie uh, to to hit the blinds and maybe get a little bit desperate. Um, so it, it's a it's a waiting game between these four tiny micro stacks um we haven't seen our chip leader make any plays it's actually all the action's been dr driven by burt stevens and bean boozled 10 do suited going for the raise in the small blind i like it like it's just be aggressive gets the better hand to fold um if no one wants to be aggressive and you're in second place you might as well just raise it up that is trading big blinds over there. He's like, you raise my big blinds from under the gun. I'll raise your big blinds from the small blind, my friend. Being boozled with ace five suited, he may feel like he's sitting on a monster because he's been raising garbage so far. But Guillaume Nolot is the one who's got the actual proper hand here in the small blind. I would like the ace queen to just open jam. Uh... Sure, they probably don't know Bean Boozle's been raising too much, but once you see a guy yeah. raising a four dupes off suit, like in the big blind, like, and his frequency is way too high, like, yeah, just ship it in, make him fold. What I do like is that he folds immediately as well. There's no pretending there, but he's like, well, he's like, nope. The 0.1 second fold is like, all right, you got me. Bean Boozled with a six <laughs> off suit. He's, he's like, all going right. For it. And he's playing this like, I don't know, he's playing a fun little hyper turbo with his own poker community or something over on Twitch where he's like, I'm raising every hand, guys. It's like, mate, this is the final table of the high roller super millions. <laughs> yeah, he's just getting it done because like those tiny stacks, they they probably would be. But, you know, the thing is, these uh, tiny stacks had like 10 big blinds. They all have like five big blinds now. They just literally ate the, bl the big blind and small blind, uh, every single one of them. Uh, well, Nator is going to open and two queens for Gilliam. Can only imagine that uh, Mr. Nolet is... Okay, he's just going to call here. Maybe a little bit intimidated by the fact that the chip leader hasn't played a single hand yet up to this point. And obviously Nator is opening from under the gun here. What oh. a flop! Gee, that is just ridiculous. Man, nobody deserves this, Nano. <laughs> I mean, that's what you get for slow playing your hand, and he's betting half pot into him. Uh, but, you know, what Gilliam was thinking is, look, I'm just going to slow play the two queens because there's four guys with oh. such shallow stacks. I don't want to bust before them. I'm trying to contain the pot, but Nador is not going to let him get away with a small pot right now. Um, he's just punished. There's no way he's folding, right? <laughs> No, I, I don't see him ever folding here. I mean, uh, but at this point, you also wonder, like, 
what is he worried about? Like, is it likely that NATO open ace jack under the gun? It's possible. He can't really fold queens there yet, but he could maybe fold to another pot size bet here. If NATO goes for it one more time and actually just bets 1.8 million here or 2 million for all I care, like whatever it is to put no let all in, maybe you can fold, but that is such a painful fold, right? I gotta admit, I don't know if I can oh. make it. Fold. Man, it's a 75% pop bet, and this is as tough as it gets. You got two queens, you slow played your hand. Um, Nator, you know, he, I guess he did want to put his opponent all in just in case his opponent, you know, you know, wants to make one of those heroic folds just because of those four guys of such tiny stacks. Uh, this, um, and I think if he folds the two queens here, it really is because of those four short stacks, and it yeah. would put him in such a terrible spot. He makes the call. Wow. Nator, this is what happens when you slow play two queens. You like that you try to keep, yeah, you kept the pot as small as small, but uh, well, you, you now you have six big blinds, right? Like, yeah, maybe you didn't lose it all, but you lost it all. Look at Elky emotes. Okay, did they, they got instructions to use Elky emotes only tonight or something? Like, they are in love with them. I feel like we've already seen more Elky emotes than we've seen Danny on the ground emotes, but just a, uh, a really awful situation there for Gilliam. No let. Uh, I don't know, like, I understand that he's maybe afraid, like, if he three bets and NATO just puts him all in pre-flop, like, then you also have a tough decision, right? Because you have two million chips, you have such a nice stack, there are so many short stacks, like, yeah, you can do it with queens, but, or you should maybe do it with queens, but that's also dangerous, just yeah. unfortunate, I think. Um, I just want to just point out Giraffe Ganger just three bet Sean Winter, Ace Deuce offsuit, man, it's, that is also a very aggressive play, but I want to point out what I think he should have did with the two queens is just open ship 30 whatever big blinds. It's three bet all in. Um, because there are so many short stacks, you kind of just yeah, it's so unlikely Nador ever has a hand that can he sure he hasn't opened a hand yet, but like he's got all the chips, he's still gonna open like King Jack suited or whatever. Yeah, uh, I would have just opened three bet jam there with the two queens. Uh, I think by calling, sure, you contain the pot a little bit, but like it doesn't stop your opponent from sucking out or maybe taking almost all your stack. Yeah. And obviously you're going to get priced in as well, right? It's like, oh, the flop bet isn't that bad. And obviously he see bets, but then the turn bet is pretty big, but you're like, well, I can't fold queens now. And then all of a sudden there is already a big pot in the center. And you're like, well... What do we do now? Sean Winter makes the call from the big blind with 9-3 suited against being boozled under the gun raise. But I have the feeling that the table is not giving too much respect right now to the raises of being boozled. Yeah, it's it's four big nits right now, right? Like these tiny stacks. And then there's Bean Boozled, who's playing every single hand, who's got only 20 big blinds. Sean Winter's defending 3-9 suited. Uh, this is a very... Uh, different scenario i'm so shocked actually that none of these short stacks have played a hand like it's just is bizarre oh, right you know but um, I, it's like they got five big blinds some have less than five big blinds yeah they're actually all kind of killing themselves at this point right oh like, man the yeah, king what, queen what the the bean boozle just bet again on a turn yep yeah just bad bet the man is unstoppable Sean Winter folds the three and you can't really blame him for that. But, you know, like obviously the pay jumps are big, right? Like you, if you go out in ninth place, you win 45K. But if you make it into the top six, you make over $100,000. And with this many short stacks, it is very appealing and tempting to fold this many hands and fold all these hands. On the other end, you're also making it impossible for yourself to win this tournament pretty much, right? Because with one or two big lines, it is just incredibly unlikely that you're going to win it. And if you do, only one of you four is going to do that. So these four guys, they're hurting each other so much at this point. Yeah, they're really hurting each other. That's a really good point. Um, Nator has like 30x the stack of like Rock and McDavid, you know? <laughs> like it's <laughs> it's 30 times. It's, it's such an insane. Co I guess like, I think if there was only two tiny micro stacks, one of them probably would have shipped it in by now. I guess the fact that there's five of them now. Five. Yeah. Uh, that means that uh, it's very likely one of them's get in. So it's literally a waiting game. Um, they're, you know what they're it looking... is, Nano? All what? five of them, sorry to interrupt there, but I believe all five are actually not waiting for each other to bust. They're waiting for Bean Boozled to bust. Because <laughs> like the way that he's <laughs> playing at this point. Yeah. Any given moment now, it doesn't matter that he's sitting on Team Million Chips. Okay. <laughs> well, 
as I say it, he takes another one down, this time with Jack Deuce, while he has absolutely nothing. <laughs> I think that's what they're waiting for. And the, you know what's the craziest thing? Being boozled, he started the final table with 20 big blinds. He's been bluffing away, opening every hand, playing every hand. He's such a crazy player. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's cold. That's a funny one. Um, uh, Bean Boozle has been... Uh, he's been my favorite player to watch so far. Like, I'm loving it. Please let this guy run up some more chips. Like, it's been really fun to watch. This would be an unfortunate moment for Sean Winter to decide to open the button with Queen 5 suited as Bean Boozled loves trash hands. Whoa, what? He, just he let folded go. Ace-10 in a small blind. Um, maybe he was just thinking, look, I've been punishing Sean Winter way too much. Uh, you know, I can let one go and... It, it's a little tight, but to be fair, yeah. Bean Boozle's been so crazy. You know, he's thinking his frequencies are way too high. Um, and also, Rock folded the Queen 10 offsuit in the cutoff last hand, uh, yeah. which it's just these guys. I, this Queen Jack is definitely going into muck. You gotta right? go like, for it here. Like, Queen Jack. But he's, he's gonna fold. He's gotta fold because no, he, he's that's all shove. he's been doing. That's all he's been doing is folding. He's shoving this one. No, no. I promise you that he's gonna shove this one. We always feel that like Queen Jack is like, well, maybe they've got nothing and I'll get it through because I have a very tight image because I have 5% VPIP. But even if they call, you're going to do all right with Queen Jack, right? Most of the time, the only real bad scenarios are Ace Queen, uh, King Queen, Ace Jack, King Jack. Like those are the hands you don't want to face. Everything else, I think is not too bad. Okay, he, he decided. He, he tanked a bit, which is a little bit worrisome, I would think, because like some people are like... Yeah, maybe he doesn't know what to do, but he actually took it down. It was a three and a half big blind shove, and he's like, yes, I got so many more chips than all these other micro stacks. <laughs> Mac David's got to probably defend here, right? His big blind. He's sitting at four big blinds at this point, and he's got pocket four. It's that destiny. And you know what I told you, Nano? The pocket four is always make a set. So this is it for Mac David, who's got 0% VPIP, by the way. <laughs> Three, look how many three guys with zero percent V pip at, at when this hand started, which is hilarious. Boom boozled 44 percent. Wow, even chip leader only five percent of the hands played, but he won all the chips in that one hand. This is what I love about poker. I feel like every single week we have such a different setup and a different way to start these final tables. Sometimes it's a shop festival, sometimes oh, the default pocket force. Okay. And now that means that Jacob Schindler is like, I'm rich, baby. We've done it. Like, <laughs> I'm back at like seven, eight bigs, nine bigs, even at this point. He's like, woohoo. I've never felt this rich. And these are the nittiest players I've seen in a long time in the Super Millions. <laughs> zero percent V pip, zero. And they folded down to less than three big blinds. How is that even possible? Two guys of 5%, one guy of 10 Oh my god. And Bean Boozled, three better <laughs> jack eight off two. I, I love Bean Boozled. Okay. He's definitely my favorite player. I love it, but can you please explain to me how you fold A stand in the small blind against the button opening, but now you're just three betting uh, jack eight in the high jack? Like, that's just so wild to me. How does that make any sense? I don't get that. Yeah. He's, he's just playing. He's, he's a feel player, man. Like, do, do you think he's playing theoretical when he's playing all these weird hands and multi-barrel bluffing with no equity every no nah, he he's a timing you know he's like mm, it looks looks like it would be strong now and oh i don't know what's going to king nine you gotta go right king nine and then i do think that charlie is gonna call well i don't know if charlie's gonna call i don't think charlie's gonna call because jacob schindler will be forced to call 1.5 more big blinds i imagine and maybe he can uh, bust out mcdavid but it looks like mcdavid wants to fold too but if he folds he has to eat the big blind before Charlie. So if I was McDavid, I would mandatory yeah. shove the King Knight. He's going to go for it. And now Charlie D23 has got a massive two big blind decision. Will he go for it <laughs> with the suited King 6? And if he I does... Feel like we'll... a, I don't know why. Doesn't this feel like some like some busto player that's been waiting it out to play the main event. Like, they're just like, please, let me get that page up. How did they have two big blinds, everyone? It's just ridiculous. <laughs> to be fair, they didn't have the greatest hands. Like, there were, like, a couple pocket pairs they could have played. Jacob Schindler does make the call, though, with 6 threes. Like, you know what? This has taken long enough. I'm going to try to get rid of one of these guys. He needs to hit a 6 or a 3. 
A six or a three, and we'll lose our first player. If not, Mac David gets the double up, and he will get the double up to five big blinds, I believe. <laughs> six, a actually, bit more, to be fair. <laughs> seven, seven. He's got seven big blinds. Give him a come on. Don't don't discount him that much. <laughs> All right, being uh, boozled with Ace King, he's gonna be like, "Whoa! I even forgot it was possible to get hands like this." You know what's hilarious is that. Yeah, there's all in a call, but if you look at it, the stack size look like nothing changed. It looks like everyone has the tiny five. How can <laughs> that one is no? Funny. That's okay. I just this is right. This is tilting me actually watching this. Everyone, like, yeah, they haven't been getting many hands, but to be fair, some of these guys have had spots to shove many times, yeah. or at least see a big blind flop. I mean, this is this is I nonsense. Mean... Well, these are just things that happen though, Nana. Like, these are not guys that make it to the final table each and every single week, right? We've seen it. A couple of the players satellited in. They may have sold some action. Second life. Pay jumps matter to these guys. And I know that a lot of pros say, like, well, if it matters that much, you shouldn't be playing this event in the first place. But, you know, it's easier said than done. I can understand it, right? 45k is nice, but just waiting until two guys with three big blinds bust and you walk away with 100k, I get it. Yeah, I mean... But it's not I mean, the you gotta wait for poker. three. You gotta wait for multiple guys to buzz. Three guys to buzz. It, it's tough with three guys to buzz before, even with the micro stacks. If you get a single page up, it's it's not big enough. To, big enough, I think. You you gotta go for those. Look at the top spot. It's just so much more. Um, but yeah. Anyways, the two fives here. He's tanking. Nator's got two jacks. Rock's got king queen suited wow. in the big blind. If three way on him, If he folds two fives here. He might get a page up, but he is gonna he's gonna jam. Yeah, and then I think that Rock is obviously going to call as well, right? There's no way that you fold King Queen fast? Did you see how fast Nator just smooth called there? Yep. Instead of just resh reshipping the standard, right? Like just knock out Rock just in case. Um, but he might let Rock see a flop here. If I'm Rock, I will absolutely call King Queen. Uh, me too. Here. Like me too. And... Oh. Wow, then the two jacks should have just reshoved pre-flop because he would have he would have knocked out the king queen. Well, right now obviously the jacks can still win with a jack or a ten or um, spade. Oh, and the spade as well. Guillaume needs uh, the five of diamonds to stay alive. We don't get any of those cards, which means we do lose our first player. Mister Nolat gets eliminated in ninth place. He will walk away with forty-five thousand dollars, but that's got to sting a little bit because he came into this final table with over two millions. If only he would have shoved those pocket queens. Yeah, and man, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy that he's the first guy out before the other four micro stacks. He's probably yeah. like on, he's got to be on the biggest toe ever, right? Because he <laughs> should be at least, at least getting like 100K or maybe 70K or something. He's got the bare minimum. Yeah. He lost, he, He's he's probably hating the way he played the two queens, talking to himself over and over again. Like, what did I, what did I do? Make a mistake there? Charlie folded King-10 offsuit, just to point that out, with 1.5 big blinds. I don't know what he's doing because... Uh, <laughs> he's not he's here, only... actually, Nano. That's what it is, okay? <laughs> he's actually he's actually not here. <laughs> we have a graphical error that makes it seem like he's here, but he's not actually here. He hasn't played a hand yet, so you can't prove me wrong. I don't... That, that seems like a bizarre fold with less than two big blinds. With, guy, with the other two guys with way more like not way more it's it is way more <laughs> despite not being any stack um, you know i used to uh, my dad loves to play a little bit of poker as well but like i said before he's very traditional old man coffee one table and i often tease him saying that like dad you don't play no limit hold them you play no limit fold them because my dad folds everything and i'm like how can you play poker like this my, my dad would love this kind of action at the final table. He's like, exactly. That's what you should do, son. You should wait. You play too aggressive. And I'm like, no, dad. I don't play too aggressive. <laughs> it's like being boozled. Too aggressive, right? Ace three offsuit, three betting the big blind against the chip leader. Um, but that's just gotta an awesome love play. It. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I just love being boozled, man. This dude, like, yeah, there's a lot of new faces at this final table, but, like, man, there have been some epic players, and being boozled is one of them. Bruno Volkman the other day was really awesome, too. Nator, two, eight, nine suited. At this point, he knows being boozled is being ridiculous. Yep. It's a good hand to see a flop with, but he is going to lay it down. I guess he's... Nader's been a little bit tight. I don't know. I would have called with that eight, nine suited. Yep. You got chips to splash. 
especially against Bean Boozled, right? And the way that he's been playing. But also, don't forget how good 9-8 suited was to him just a couple of hands ago when he flopped the nuts against the Queens against uh, Nolet. So, in that regard, he maybe should have given another shot. It seems like Jacob Schindler is seriously considering a shove here of roughly mm. six big blinds with a six suited. And that's pretty much what he's doing here. I like Jacob Schindler's play here. Like, he, you know, like, yeah, I bet you Charlie would have insta-folded that hand in that spot because, like, a lot of guys be like, Charlie's clearly going to get it all in coming up soon, right? But Jacob Schindler knows that, sure, pay well, jumps are important, but you got to put yourself in a position to maybe get top four, top three, top, you know, eventually. And if, if you just keep folding every hand, you're not going to get the opportunity to do so. And uh, he, he picked up a much-needed couple big blinds, uh, even though Charlie is clearly going to get it all in next hand. I think. Yeah. I think he's going to nah, get it all in next hand. Come on. He's got no choice. <laughs> If you don't go all in next hand, then he is actually automatically all in the hand afterwards. I feel no, there's no way. Even he came in for he came in to just spam emojis and leave pretty much. <laughs> and a pay jump, to be fair. I mean, he's made more money than I did tonight. So in that regard, Charlie did all right. But <laughs> yeah, have we ever seen a man? Hey, if he goes oh, all in, ten seven suited Risha from a giraffe ganger. Wow, wow. Oh, right. Sorry if I did interrupt, but that just. A great ganger's been really aggressive too all right this is it for uh, charlie d like obviously jack nine is about as good as it's ever going to get if you have one big blind and you'd be forced to go all in next hand he's got zero percent vpip still i was about to ask we've never seen anybody bust with zero percent vpip <laughs> and that could have happened if he would have folded this one too and then be all in the next hand with a small blind but oh, i think this is it for charlie ganger. But Giraffe Ganger's three betting Bean Boozle eight five suit. He knows Bean Boozle's been ridiculous. Like, oh, the oh, reshift of the two sixes. Oh. oh, what a play! Hey, that's great news for Charlie though. Now he can triple up with Jack nine. All he needs is a Jack or a nine or a ten. Jack nine or a ten one time, or even an eight or a seven, right? It's gonna be oh, a my deuce. Goodness. So many outs. Oh, I feel bad for Charlie. And he does get eliminated now. A 0% VPIP, 8th place finish <laughs> for Charlie D, our Norwegian player. Did make one pay jump though, Nano. So his VPIP number never went higher uh, before he left the table. It literally said 0 when he left too because he, <laughs> you know, it's all going to... But uh, Bean Boozled and Giraffe Ganger. Man, Bean Boozled opening King 6 offsuit. What the? What's going on? And did you saw the insta ship by Bean Boozled with two sixes, just knowing That's what insane. Giraffe Ganger was up to? But Giraffe yeah. Ganger was like eight, five, six. like they know what each other's doing. So Bean Boozled was just like, I'm just going to shut you out right away. But Ace King here. Next payout is $77,000. This would be a bad moment for Bean Boozled to do the same play. You know what's going on over here, Nano? I think a Bean Boozled, after playing that much Oma. He's like, you know what? I'm bored, man. Like, no limit. It's pretty fun. Just not enough cards. Oh, oh my God. That. No. Mate, he is crazy. He's been drinking I... caparinas tonight. <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> wow. But this is this is so fun. The, the history between Bert Stevens, Bean Boozled, and Sean Winter has been really fun to watch. It's just those three guys in the corner just battling out over and over again. And Nathan is the Michael Jackson meme where he's eating popcorn on the side and he's like, yeah, I'll play you guys heads up, you know. I'll take the top two finish and I'll see who comes out on top. Being boozled, just once again, under the gun, plus one, opens up, ace, five offsuit. Whatever happened to playing these final tables conservative and ICM and chips matter, nano, no -co. Like every big yeah. light is so important. Not the only guys apparently. playing ICM is those micro stacks right now. Um, looks like we're finally going to get another clash. McDavid and Rock uh, look like they got the hands. But uh, I was going to say, Nator, yeah, he's got these so many chips. Maybe it's not worth splashing around a little bit. Just let those guys bust out. Guaranteed top two is really good with that stack size, too. Yeah. That would be a 300k finish. That's probably his biggest finish uh, over at GG Poker. So McDavid is all in, guys, with the King Jack suited. And the Rock Gostisa, the man who loves rock climbing, swimming, and all the other outdoor activities, is going to reshuffle the Ace King offsuit. Needs to avoid a Jack or a whole bunch of spades or a weird straight draw. That's a very good flop for Ace King. Oh my oh. God. Wow, I'm feeling Nananoko right now. That's just brutal. <laughs> uh, the jack? Yeah. 
Go ahead. Oh, that's looking so sick. Like uh, I love Bert Stevens. He's got he's got the Elky emoji game on point right now. <laughs> Wow, McDavid staying alive, hitting the jack from heaven there on the turn, going in, kind of dominated. And Rocco Sisa, the man who came in as short as stack to this final table, let's not forget, already made two pay jumps. But if he would have won that one as well, Nano, he would have been at 1.2 million, which is pretty damn close to Sean Winter is stack. Being boozled in the big blind, man. It looks like he wants to make a play at Giraffe Ganger, doesn't it? Like, he's like, hmm, do I really want to three bet again? Especially from the big blind, oh he's going to do it. Oh my God. Like, this I think it's getting, it. it's getting personal, right? Like, yeah. you notice, like, it's just him and Giraffe Ganger just playing a heads up match with five other guys at the table. It honestly feels like I'm watching a play money tournament where somebody is like ready to show off how good he is at poker. So they just three bet everything and they're like, yeah, you can't call this, you can't call this. But this is the final table. The pay jumps are massive. Bean Boozle doesn't give it them. Flops a gut shot. Actually, uh, Flops a double belly yeah. best, double belly bust straight draw. Is that how you guys call it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Bean Boozle is like, wow, I got called, but uh, this is the perfect board to bet and bet again and bet. Just keep betting. A seven or a three will give the straight to Bean Boozled. And obviously, there are a couple backdoors available for Giraffe Ganger. Hmm. Funny bet. Wow. Yeah, that's, it's a very small bet. And Bert Stevens, Giraffe Ganger, is thinking, man, I, I just got a call here. This guy's just up to no good. But the six on the turn. I would say the six doesn't change that much. The reason is I don't think Bean Boozled think. Bert Stevens has a six too often to raise undergun and call a three bet. It's just very unlikely. And being boozled going again for another bet. I, but I think I actually think Giraffe Ganger is gonna call. If you call on that flop, I think you're gonna call on this turn as well. I mean, well, he's up against Bean Boozle, who's so crazy. Of course, calling down here of Ace Jack High in these positions is also very heroic. And he does make a call again. It's an ace on high on the river. That's good. Can Bean Boozled fire one more bet? I actually believe if he goes all in here, that there is a very good chance you're off ganger calls. Like, I think Bean Boozled needs to give up. I know that he doesn't like giving up and it's going to hurt, but this is just not the run out where you want to keep bluffing. Like, he could be representing maybe like pocket eights, nines, or tens here, right? Because he did three bet pre flop as well. But. I have the feeling that Giraffe Ganger will call him. Like you said before, the hand even started, Nanonoko. It became personal between these two. And I think because it's personal, he's going to make the call with ace high. If Bean Boozled goes for it, and I have the feeling he will, but he's going to be wrong. Yeah, it's, this is such an intense hand. Like, there's so many short stacks, of course, but these two guys do not care. But they do know that's into play. But Bean Boozled, I think he's he's been going too crazy. He's thinking, okay... He's thinking, if I shove, like, ace, if he had ace, king, and shove, would maybe his opponent, they both just chop it up with the ace, right? The four is actually a bad card. It would be yeah. better for him to shove any other card that doesn't double pair the board. Absolutely. Wow. The 6-4 the run out is horrible, I think, for being boozled. Like, absolutely horrible. Like, yeah, so uh, right... Bean Boozle's thinking, okay, what hands his opponent can have that can calm down? I think he thinks that Burt Stevens would reship middle pocket pairs a lot that's what he's why he's thinking a lot so he's thinking okay maybe he doesn't have a pocket pair eights nines tens they would have just shipped it in sevens maybe ship it in two sixes two fours well that's unlikely that would be quads so maybe he's thinking bert stevens has ace high and now he's thinking will he call me with ace high and that's what he doesn't know right now that's why he's thinking yeah i mean obviously we see the whole card so it's very easy to analyze everything but it does really feel that this is weakness because he's taking so long and uh, like he's been playing incredibly fast up to this point. Uh, I, I'm, I, I think he's gonna go for it. I think he's gonna talk himself into making the crazy all in here. But I actually think that Giraffe Ganger is going to call. Yeah, regardless, if he wants to move Ace high off the hand, he would need to shove. He can't bet like one million. He's gonna bet eight hundred thousand. It's gonna it's get a called. third of the pot. Bean Boozled took. What three minutes before he he bet that river card roughly? Yeah, but it's just a tough spot for Ace Jack. It's a bet, bet, bet. The thing is, Bert Stevens knows with Ace High he does chop against other Ace Highs, mm -hmm. but this guy's been so crazy. Maybe even the Ace High is actually good. 
You know what's really funny? <laughs> he bet 801,000 chips. <laughs> or 800,001. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god, he gets the fold. He gets the ace, gets the ace high to fold. Took, he took three minutes and he, we do get the I want to call Elke emoji. Wow, I really thought Jirov Gang was going to call. Like, of course, being boozled could have eights, nines, or tens the way that he played it, but especially against the 800,000 pot, I really thought he would call. Yeah, um, that was that was such a cool hand to watch, though. Like, man, it was <laughs> being boozled. I'm so a part of me is happy being boozled one to the hand just because I didn't want him to be a micro stack and be out of this tournament because you know he probably wanted to sh ship any two cards at that point. Um, but that wow. was that was that was so epic, man. Like, that might be that's definitely one of the craziest hands we've seen that wasn't you know during heads up play. Like, mm -hmm. wow. It, it was so ridiculous. And being boot, this is this is so personal. Like that was definitely a <laughs> fu bet on the river card, and this is a fu three bet of h seven offs. But these guys hate each other. I think they literally hate each other, and they don't even they just two virtual guys playing online. <laughs> I mean. I think every poker player is familiar with the moment where there is this one dude at the table who keeps three betting you, and at one point it's like, whether it's online or offline, it doesn't matter. It's like, man, I can't stand this guy. Well, the A7 shove here, by the way, against the two uh, short stacks from the button. Obviously, they can't hurt Giraff Ganger that much, and I guess Giraff Ganger just realized that these guys really want a ladder. They want to get another pay jump, and he's like, well, I don't think they're going to call me. But yeah, I, I've had this online too, though, Nano. When somebody keeps three betting me, I was like, man, like seven minutes ago, I didn't even know you existed. And now I can't stand you. <laughs> like, you're really <laughs> getting to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Brazilian PLO player is the perfect combination. Bean Boozled, he's actually looking crazier than Michael Adamo, like the, like the pre flop <laughs> game, right? Like, I didn't think it was possible, but I think Bean Boozled actually is that guy. Um, the, it's just, this is like, you know, we came to this final table, not sure what to expect. Like a lot of new names, like, you know, it's sometimes, you know, it's not, it's not as action heavy, but this has been like one of the fun, most fun things I've watched. Like I thought it was going to be a little drier, a little bit like, oh, there's a lot of these micro stacks, everyone waiting out, but no, this being boozled is delivering. <laughs> Bert Stevens is delivering. They're just battling it out. It's eight, 10 offsuit. Uh, just open raising like Nator is just trying it's just sitting back and it's like you know what being boozled you knock everyone out if you want guarantee me top two is okay <laughs> you know what I find the most bizarre thing is that he bet like 800k on the river or 801,000 like he didn't go for the all-in maybe like maybe he tried to really make it look like he was going for value and maybe with this sizing it seems that He's like, hey, I really want to get called. Because if I go all in, you might not call. But with this sizing, I really want you to call. He just shoves 810 here, by the way. Again, man, this guy is brutal. What? He's got no chill at all. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, but yeah, maybe. I think that's... He, the thing is, the three-minute tank is, is, is interesting. Because yeah. I think the truth is, most people don't take three minutes and then bet. Most of the time, it's three minutes to think about calling or not. Uh, I'm wondering if the nine seven is gonna go for it here, small blind to big blind. But um, yeah, I, I think moment. the three minute bet is just so rare, right? Like, yeah. And Bert Stevens probably has never seen that before. Um, but it was, <laughs> I've never seen it before, but I I love to see it. That's why you got the time bank. <laughs> <laughs> The three minute tank into betting, like what was it, 40% pot, 30% pot, something along those lines? 30%. Wow. Uh, Poor Sean Winter, by the way, in the previous round, gets a walk with his pocket nines. I'm sure he would have liked to have a little action or at least the option to reshelve something. Now, our chip leader almost forgot that he's at this table as well. He's going to open it up with a stand, but Sean Winter is going to flop big here with his king queen, flops top two pair. You know, and that's the funny thing is three guys are just thinking, Sean Winter, please get cooler. Please get cooler. Please get cooler. Do you know? Wow. Oh, man, he might get cooler because look at this <laughs> run out right now. So a lot of outs at this point. Obviously, a jack or a diamond will give Nater the W here. Sean Winter just keeps checking. And 
I, I think this also controls the pot a little bit, you know, like, of course he doesn't want to accidentally boss before everyone. Um, if it goes check, check again on the turn, he probably will go for some. I want to see him raise play. here, though. Like, I feel like at this point, I, I would love to see him shove here. I, I would too. It just, just lock it down, but it looks like he, okay. Sean Winter is, is trying to just control the pot and not bust before the other two guys. Um, but we saw how much of a disaster that was for the, for Gilliam, right? The two queens. Uh, but Nator, ace 10. It's usually the, the best Nator. hand. It's yeah, just, I think do you think he can call by worse? But like, yeah. I mean, he might be hoping that Sean Winter is sitting on a single king or a single queen. But I actually think that Nator is going to check here based upon the way that he's been playing so far. Uh, check, a check to me would make sense. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, and it's a, it's a very nice check. It's 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 very it, it's it's safe. I think he just think, look, I got the best hand usually, but I just don't think you'll call it for us. And he did a Jacob Schindler with what was it? Three big blinds, <laughs> three and a half big blinds, folds, pocket deuces. You know, no, no, I hate deuces now. On Saturday in the Beat the Pros event, I busted with deuces. I was greedy. I called a seven big blind shelf uh, when I had eight big blinds and he had such a big bounty. I was like, that's my bounty. But he had kings and then the big blind <laughs> called as well and he had aces. And my friend just opened the stream. He's like, wow, I can see you're playing well tonight. And I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> He's like, I opened the stream and I see you call off with deuces against aces and kings. Well done, mate. I'm like, oh. Oh, man. Being boozled. He loves four deuce offs. You know, like, if I'm McDavid, I know there's two guys that are super short, but I feel like you just call and just go with any flop that you hit yeah. because any it problem. seems like almost free chips if Bean Boozle's playing four deuce offsuit. Well, if he's playing four deuce offsuit, he will definitely be playing King Queen here. And there's a good chance that Bert Stevens, also known as Giraffe Ganger, is going to go for another three bet here. He has three bet with worse so far at this final table, Nana. Yeah. Um, definitely a good chance he three bets. He's at least going to call here. Uh, Bart Stevens knows his frequencies has been pretty high against Bean Boozled. He is still going to go for the three bet, uh, put the pressure because the truth is if Bean Boozled's opening king six off suit and stuff like this, three bet is going to be way more uh, plus EV. The only danger part about three betting is, of course, Bean Boozled can go for a four bet bluff. Um, and it is going to be a four bet again with King Queen. Last time he did this, it didn't work. What is Bert Stevens <laughs> going to do? <laughs> this is so personal. It's so personal. This, I really do feel like we're watching a heads up battle already. Like, this is a grudge match, okay? This has been settled on Twitter. These guys have challenged each other, and this is how they're playing heads oh up. He gets God. the best hand to fold as well. Man, being boozled is probably be the mo is probably the most aggressive play we've seen in 16 weeks at the high roller super millions and that says enough because we've had players like michael adamo and who was the other guy who was just raising everything it was bruno volksman right last week bruno volkman was pretty aggressive too but not to being boozles degree like this is a new level of th like the thing is most guys right they raise a lot they three bet sometimes you know they four bet once but he takes he goes for every single hand the only spot he passed up was the ace 10 Austin small blind. Maybe he had to, you know, eat his sandwich or whatever. Who knows? Like, but uh, he's gone for it every single time. Rock here is going to go with the ace four suit. And Bean Boozle finally gets a real hand. Yeah. The rest of the table is not going to believe it. They're like, oh, no. He's going to give some chips to Rock, isn't he? But to be fair to Bean Boozled, he hasn't been bleeding out chips for no reason, right? Like most of the time, he's either been winning pots or he's just been uh, right about the calls he's been making. Rock knows that he's going to need a little bit of help here. A four or a whole bunch of spades or maybe a low straight draw. Well, that's a start. A deuce <laughs> would be amazing. Perfect timing on the low straight draw potentially. Up. But that is not going to be it. And that means that Rock will be eliminated in seventh place. Walk away with $77,000. And perhaps good news for everyone watching this stream is that Bean Boozled will now have 5 million chips to work with. And this man is crazy. And he's been an absolute blast to watch so far. Look at the VPIP. He's got 40, what, 5% VPIP. Everyone's like in the 20s. And a lot of guys are in the sixes. The chip leader who started, it's got 13% VPIP. <laughs> 
Uh, this is the Bean Boozled show, man. If I knew Bean Boozled was going to play like this, I would pick this guy every single time. Like, he's so fun to watch. Uh, obviously, he's got, he's just as relentless as it gets. And uh, I just love it. This McDavid. could be a moment for McDavid to go for No, it's it, right? not, right? Like, come on, McDavid going to play Queen 10 suited? I don't know, man. Like, this guy's been folding every single hand. But he's been getting pay jumps. Oh, he does go for it. And King Jack's out. Sean Winter's going to nail him. Yep. Sean Winter is probably going to make the call here. But a check against Queen 10. That's always Queen or a 10. And if he does, we are down to six. That is paint. Oh. That's not a queen. It's diamond. It's, it's a king. It's a diamond. It's a king. Oh. Man, now he's he's like, man, this is my big moment. Do I shove the Queen 10 suited? Oh, the King Jack oh, Jacob yeah. Schindler fold. That, that just rubs it in because it's like I would have shoved myself. Yep, the two big blinds as well, right? That's just the absolute worst because that would have been a triple up for him. Um, but it does mean we're down to five. I mean, Jacob Schindler with 6% VPIP has now guaranteed himself $133,000. <laughs> uh, but he's also forced to go all in pretty much within the next two hands. Well, look. Jacob Schindler won the mini tournament that was out there. It was the micro stack tournament. Five guys going for it. He won it. He came out on top. He's guaranteed the top prize of one hundred thirty-three thousand. Uh, now we're gonna see him out of the tournament soon, probably, because he's got yeah. Nator has seventy-seven times his stack. Yeah, I, I, you definitely go for it at this point. I mean, one big blind king nine suited. There's no way you ever fold this. That'd be, I think he's looking for his Elky just one time emoji. <laughs> yeah um it looks like Bert Stevens gonna give him oh 33 more K let's go well, this could be a double up King nine versus deuce four so far so good Ooh. needs to avoid the trees now as well we need to see a card above seven and we will that's the A's that's a safe card and that means we will get a double up Jacob Schindler is now at four big blinds oh my goodness I mean, look, he, he, he came out on top as a, like, he, he was the best. He's the best guy, right? Like, he's the guy of all the live winnings. He showed those other four guys out. The thing is, Gilliam wasn't even supposed to be a micro stack. He turned into a micro stack with those two queens, remember? Yeah. Uh, Sean this Winter could here. be another double up for Jacob Schindler, though. Imagine going from two big lines to four Ooh. to eight. Flops the open-ended straight draw. I mean, there's, there's no way you ever fold this. He's going to go for it immediately. And Sean Winter might even... No, he's going to make the call. Obviously getting very good pot odds, but uh, he's going to need to dodge a lot of cards. So far, so good. We need to see a king, eight, queen, or a jack. That's not it. And that means the ace will be the best hand. And it means that our micro tournament is officially over. Congratulations to Jacob Schind uh, Schindler for winning $133,000. Nananoko, we're down to four. But four players with a lot of big blinds. I feel right now it's time to play some proper poker. Yeah, this is a uh, this is phase two of the tournament. Um, yeah. You know, we got rid of all the little guys, and it's the Bean Boozled and Bert Stevens. Oh, I was gonna, just, of course, just firing out first hand three betting the king nine suited. Like these guys do not wait. They're just like, let's go for it. Let's battle and Bean Boozled. Come on, there's no way he's folding King Jack, is it? Like, he's four bet the Kings. Oh, he did fold the King Jack. I think he was thinking, look, you got to wake him with a hand eventually. But the thing is, these two guys are nonstop constantly battling each other. I've already learned one thing in these last uh, 53 minutes of watching these guys play poker. And that is that I will make no predictions on any hand that Bean Boozled is involved in. Because he three bets four dudes and five eight, but then he folds a stand in the small blind against the button opening. I'm like, all right, this man works in his own mysterious ways, and I love watching it. But I will not make any predictions about what I think he's going to do because I've got no damn clue. Yeah, um, looks like, but you know, we're playing forehand. The blinds are gonna come around a lot more. I think we're gonna see Nator open up a lot more too. Uh, who came in as a chip leader. As you can see, he's opened up A6 offsuit. The dynamic is very different now. There's a lot more stack to play for. We're going to see a lot of post flop. It's time to play some poker. Yep. Bert Stevens does flop top pair here, but obviously Nator has got a gut shot with his uh, six. That'd be an action card. Or, uh, yeah, a three would be an action card. The nine is safe, so Bert Stevens still in the lead here. 
I feel like we haven't really seen what NATO is made of, right? Like, I know that he opened up Ace-9 suited under the gun and then flopped the straight, but those are hands that even I can play in Ananoko. <laughs> we haven't really seen him being put to the test yet and see how he plays in certain tricky situations. Yeah, but, you know, that's all right. You know, you come in as a chip leader, you got five guys who bust out before you, and you got the same stack, roughly. Like, it's, it's a pretty good situation. Um, but I think we will see him step up. Um, he's... I'm pretty sure he's he is an aggressive player because based on the hand history before, I remember him check raising like eight nine on like a king queen jack or something like that, just purely yeah, nothing. Double so queen. king jack yeah. queen queen. <laughs> yeah. So like um he's definitely capable. I think he was just like, Okay, I've locked up hundred and seventy five thousand. Um I think now maybe it's the time to maybe play at these guys. But then again, Bean Booze was so crazy, maybe wait him out. All right, guys, it is time for our very first break here at the 16th edition of the High Roller Super Millions played over at GG Poker. A $10,000 buy-in event with a 2 million guaranteed prize pool. This was a very interesting first hour where we had a couple of guys just waiting it out, like you often see at some of the smaller stake tournaments at the final table. People going down to two big blinds. We don't normally see it. We witnessed it today. But now I think we're in for a very fun hour where Bert Stevens and Dean Boozled We'll continue their epic battles and we'll see if Sean Winter and Nator can put themselves in the mix as well. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the show so far. We'll take a little break and we'll be back in a couple of minutes to continue this final table.
All right, guys, I'm back. One minute and 45 seconds to go. Nananoka will join us soon as well. I just want to mention that we still have a lot of awesome things running over at GG Poker. Obviously, every Sunday, excuse me, every Saturday, actually, at 7 p.m., we have the Beat the Pros event. It's a $210 bounty builder. I believe last Saturday we had close to a thousand people playing in it. It's really fun. A lot of influencers, a lot of streamers are playing in it. One of my good friends had an epic run last Saturday. And we were all watching it. A lot of StarCraft guys enjoying some poker action. Obviously, we just wrapped up the GGSOP series. Hopefully, you guys enjoy those events. Uh, basically, daily events running with small buy-ins. But that kind of stuff is always running as well. Maybe slightly smaller because this was obviously a tournament series. But... Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And of course, uh, we still have the GG Masters going on as well. Flagship freeze out series that's happening uh, on the daily and in the weekends, we've got the big ones, a $150 buy -in event on Sunday and a $1,000 event on Sunday as well. And I think that's about it. Nananoko is back. He's ready for some more bean boozled action. He's been bamboozling all of us so far with his non-stop three bets and four bets. I'm ready for it, Nano. I want to see some more crazy plays. This man has been a lot of fun to watch so far. Yeah, um, you know, it, it's a dick measuring contest, man. Like these guys, this guy's just like, <laughs> look, I've got the biggest one. Like I'm just re-raising everyone, like for lack of a better way to say, like he, he's been crazy and he's been the most fun to watch. Uh, you know, Sean Winter has been getting involved with him a little bit, but you know what? He's like, um, let Bean Boozled do his thing a little bit. Uh, Bart Stevens has been the main guy fighting Bean Boozled. Has been getting some spots correctly, some spots incorrectly against him. Um, the biggest, most fun hand we saw was with the 8-5 suited, right? 8-5 uh, not suited. I gave Bean Boozled too much credit. 8-5 off suit, what, three bet against that ace-jack suited? That was such a cool hand. Uh, and it, it, the tournament's not over. These guys got some big blinds to play with. And then the three minute tank on the river into the 33% pot bet on a 6644 deuce board, I believe it was. I mean, pretty insane hand indeed. Let's continue. Let's see if our chip leader can make some waves because he's been a little quiet so far. I gotta say, I don't hate the way he's been playing it though. I don't think every chip leader has to be a Michael Adamo. Uh, that's obviously a skill that Michael has, but if you're not comfortable playing like that, just because you're the chip leader, I don't think you should necessarily put yourself in those positions. So I don't hate how he's been playing, but now that we're down to four, I would like to see him get a little more involved. Yeah, um, and I'll tell you this. Nator has, I would say in general, has been playing pretty tight. Um, he's got a tight image. I think he can get away with some more opens, maybe a three bet here and there. And then, you know, maybe chill out again, because right now everyone probably thinks he's very tight. And obviously, Sean Winter has been a bit quiet as well, but it's hard to make a lot of noise when you have Bean Boozled on your right, who's just, you know, that he's always going to get involved and he doesn't let anything go. Bert Stevens is going to open up King Queen suited under the gun. Bean Boozled made 8 4. It's just not a good hand. There is no shame in folding your big blind every now and then. Let it go. <laughs> it does let it go. Uh, you know what I'm thinking? You know what's funny? One of the most important parts of the tournament actually is the first 10 seconds right it's when you get a seat selection if you can make sure you're not out of position being boozled you would be in a very good spot here and you know Bert Stevens he, he's got more chips than he started to final table with because he took position on being boozled if you think about it Sean Winter likes to play a lot of hands but he's been a bit handcuffed because of how crazy being boozled has been playing at him uh being out of position so that goes to show you Think about your seat selection. Maybe it's not always taking position on the chip leader. It's taking position on the Brazilian players. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that in mind if I ever make a final table again. You know? I got to say the tournament's <laughs> been rough lately. But if I do have one, I'll try to avoid the Brazilians. <laughs> Just sit on opposite ends of the table. Bert <laughs> Stevens is going to make the three bet here with ace-queen. Sean Winter has obviously not been getting a whole lot yet. May feel that his hand is pretty good here. He is going to make the call. Flops a gut shot, but obviously Bert Stevens has a hammerlock on his hand at this point with his uh, top pair queen kicker. I, 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 don't, I like the call of King Queen. Bert Stevens clearly three bets some garbage as well. Um, he doesn't have a backdoor diamond with the King Queen offsuit. Yeah. He might still call though, because King, maybe you hit a King or Queen, you're good. Of course, you've hit the Jack, you got the nuts. Um, your opponent might feel obligated to C bet ace high board. Uh, so he does make the call. 
Now, if Bert mm-hmm. Steven is a tricky spot because I know he, I'm pretty sure he thinks the ace queen is good. It's just how do you extract the most value with the queen of diamonds? It's pretty good because you know your opponent has a you know like a gut shot. Like they don't have many outs. You know what I mean? Like is he, he wants to either check to pick off king jacks, king queens who feel obligated to to bet, or maybe just keep going for value against maybe like an ace jack offsuit or, or something like that. Wow, he's just gonna shove. And that's going to get Sean Wynn to default easily. Obviously, guys, if you're watching the stream, you're enjoying it. Make sure to follow the channel. There are an insane amount of giveaways on this channel, not just on this stream every single Tuesday evening, which is already one reason to tune in besides the crazy poker action, but also on a lot of the other shows that are running here. So if you've got a GG Poker account, make sure to follow this channel on Twitch. And if you don't have one yet, you can always join the platform and use promo code GGTV for $100 in bonuses. And maybe you can satellite your way into a bigger satellite, into the high roller super millions, and then get some nice feedback of Nana Noko on your crazy place. <laughs> yeah, you're either, you're either gonna be like the craziest player or like the biggest nip, but you're never gonna be in between. You know, like no one, there's no in between players here in the super millions. Uh, two kings for Nator. Sean, you know, I feel like Sean Winter's been getting all the marginal spots. Yeah. He never gets like some premiums or some weekends. He's just like, give me all the ace nine offsuits the king jack offsuits like and he's just like forced to put in some chips in some spot ace nine is a reasonable hand to reshove with for 20 big blinds uh he is going to let it go i would definitely see him shoving on bean boozled or burt but i think against nator it's like mm, maybe not worth it it's actually funny because we haven't seen that many real hands yet tonight, right? And I think about it. Obviously, we saw pocket queens, and uh, they had a very unfortunate <laughs> ending. But I haven't seen a whole lot of aces. Did we see aces once, maybe? Uh, but mm. the kings haven't seen it once up to this point. Actually, interesting, because sometimes we start this final table, and it's nothing but monsters left, right, and center. But other than the occasional ace king, we haven't really seen that many crazy hands. Oh, that was weird. Bert Stevens actually led the flop got raised and he just showed him that i was lead bluffing into you mm-hmm. i never seen anyone lead bluff into someone and show their cards when they <laughs> folded the hand like it was kind of weird um but regardless uh, i want to say that last hand i think bert stevens made a try to make an adjustment against, against nator who he thinks is playing very straightforward leading into someone who's a chip leader on 754 is like you know it's it's a, little, it's a little dicey, but uh, yeah, that was, that's quite interesting from Bert. Poor Sean Winter. He's like, all right, Queen 10 of hands against pocket kings. Well, that's interesting. He just min raised into Sean Winter. I don't really like that because Sean Winter is going to defend very wide. You're just giving him two. I think if you're just going to min raise into the big blind, like with this stack death, like you might as well just limp because now you're kind of like, Loading the pot for no reason a little bit, but Nator is going to continuation bet half the pot. Uh, but you know, Sean Winter's got top pair. Sean Winter's thinking about raising, like this is what you would s- suggest, right? Raise the flop and just lock down what's in the middle. I like it a lot because of how shallow Sean Winter is. He doesn't need to preserve his stack and try to like keep the pot small. I especially like it because Sean Winter hasn't been running particularly good so far. So if you do <laughs> finally uh, King. flop King. top pair. <laughs> Then just at least try to either get more oh! chips in the middle. Wow. And in the immediate all in by Sean Winter, he will receive the good news. He needs to avoid a king doll. Turn is safe. Let's see if it's paint or not. It's no pain. That was a very quick river. But that's a double up for Sean Winter. This is the first time all night long that I feel Nator got a little bit out of line, right? That was very out of line there. Um, I think. Maybe it's a little bit of frustration. Uh, I'm not sure, but I really did not like that shot from Nator. I understand a little bit of the logic, but I just feel like it was a little bit heroic, especially, I don't know, Sean Winter's bluff raising that flop with that stack size in that scenario. Yeah. It just seems unlikely. But this could be a scenario of where Nator is kind of like the amateur and Sean Winter is the seasoned pro, and then the seasoned pro makes a move on you on a board like that. And then you're like, these guys, they think they can just raise me because they, they know that I'm not connecting with this board, but neither are they. So I'm going to put them all in. Like, I can maybe see the logic from that angle. Just on unfortunate moment since Sean Winter did have 8 7. Yeah, I can definitely see that angle as well. I'll just say, Nator's, there's two things that are going to happen. Either Nator is just going to go crazy and bluff it all off, 
Or he's going to be like, you know what? I was playing tight earlier. It was working. I was getting pay jumps. Let me just go back to that gear. I still got 6 million chips, cracked almost a chip leader. Um, so I can really see how things could change. Uh, and he's got top air here. You know what? Just keep the pot small. Just keep calling. Don't raise. Don't, don't, don't try to go crazy. I can see this is becoming a very scary board, though. And that six of diamonds on the river is probably a card that does scare him a little bit as well. Obviously, four to a straight at this point. Bert Stevens was actually sitting on kind of a monster there on the turn, right? Like pair of yeah. eights and a flush draw. But the river is of no help. And uh, NATO just got to check this down for sure and hope this jack is good. And this jack is good. That's a really good way to just forget about that previous hand, right? Of course. Um... Yeah, it was still a reasonable amount of chips, but uh, it does it does kind of give me that vibes like Burt Stevens like trying to keep pot small against Nator. I think he's gonna maybe try to grind out Nator. Nator is gonna limp ten nine off suit. This is what he should have did with the King Four suited last hand, because if he did this, I'm pretty sure he would have lost all his chips uh, against the eight seven. Um, you know, he's flop top pair plays pretty much equally the same. Yeah, uh, if I think about it, like I don't really hate the move with King Four because on a board like seven three three, how often will Sean Winter have it there? Like more often than not, the pros do make a move on you. So I, I get it. It was just unfortunate timing, I think. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think it's the worst play because of course his opponent could have flush draws and stuff. Um, but I think maybe he should have took a little bit more time. And if he took more time and came to the same conclusion, I would like it even more. But it seemed a little bit like rush decision, like, oh, he's making a move on me. He's Sean Winter. I just go for it. Exactly. Um, and maybe if there was a spade on the board as well, it would have been like slightly better because then at least you have the backdoor flush draw as well. But there was no spade either. At least yeah, that's, that's, picking up a that's what I like to see. Did you see Nator three bet the ace eight offsuit? And um, that's what I was saying is that he's got a tight image. Just go for some three bets, and you see how fast Burt Stevens fold. Like, if Burt Stevens got three of that bean boozled, I don't know if Burt's going to fold his hand. You know, he might just four bet it. Got A7 battling it out here against King 9. Burt Stevens obviously flopping top pair. Nator makes the check, gets his ace on the turn. What a turn card. Power of position, man. You get, you can just choose to take free cards and spike that ace. Obviously, the pay jumps are going to get really big right now. Next payout is $174,000. You guys can see that on the left side and also on the top side of our screen. And after that, it goes to 228, 300K, and $393,000 for the winner tonight. Nator will receive the good news that his ace is good. Always nice to win pots with hands like a7, where it's like, I don't know. You know what I really like? When I'm playing single table, if I'm deep into a tournament after a long day of poker, I'm like, all right, sometimes it's final table, single screen. And then I do actually use the squeeze function, the pre-flop squeeze function uh, on TG Poker. Because it's kind of exciting when you see, like, the first card, and you're like, ooh, and then you can lay it down again. And you're like, all right, I'll wait until it's my turn. And then you can already think, like, if it's a jack, queen, king, ace, like, what yeah. do I do? Extra, extra squeeze finally, every hand. Finally gets a real hand here, Nananoko. Pocket Kings, Bert Stevens raising into him. I feel like uh, Sean Winter hasn't really been able to tree bet a whole lot yet, but this is obviously a dream spot to do so. Is going to go for the three bet, and uh, but Bert's like, you know, you haven't been three betting. Insta lay down. Uh, but yeah, I think the squeeze function is pretty cool. I think uh, some of the streamers out there do use it. I think Kevin Martin, one of them, uses the yeah. squeeze function. So check it out if you haven't. Uh, it's really a cool feature. Like just, it's like a feature that you know a lot of you're just thinking what an online site would just never make. But uh, you know, of course, GG comes up with these. They bring in these features from like live poker, right? Like uh, and, and more so, hunting. yeah, rabbit hunting, uh, showing some cards and. Actually, what's extra, extra special is that you can show your cards even though you folded your hand. Like, of course, in live poker, you can't, like, deal, go back into the muck. Hey, dealer, can you show that <laughs> deuce of hearts I, I threw in there earlier? Yeah. yeah. And you've got, you get very funny moments as well where, you know, somebody was chasing a flush draw and they missed and then everybody else is showing that they too had a diamond. And it's like, guys, like, I really don't care, okay? I'm already <laughs> tilted enough that I chased my flush and I missed it. Why are all of you guys showing me a diamond right yeah. now? 
Nine um, seven makes the ooh. call here. No uh, real help yet for Bamboozled, but or yeah. Dean Boozled rather. But he does pick up a open ender to go with his flush draw. Yeah, to recap on this hand, it was a limp pot a limp at the beginning, but Bean Boozled raised the big blind with Jack Five suited and Sean Winter limp called. It is check call from Sean Winter, and now it's another bet from Bean Boozled. And Bean Boozled's like, oh, I got so many outs and he misses. The eight is no help. Obviously, at this point, Sean Winter probably a little worried that his nine might not be good here. He's spraying for a check at this point. 1.6 million in the middle. And Bean Boozled, he'd need to bet a lot of chips to win this hand. And he's just like, you know what? Everyone knows I'm crazy. Let's just shut it down. I think if it came an overcard, man, that's was more chips going in. He's been bleeding out a lot of chips, though. At one point, he was at 4.8, 4.9 million, I believe. And at this point, Bean Boozled sitting at 2.9. So losing close to half of his stack ever since we've gone down to four-handed. Doesn't, he doesn't stop. He's like, yeah, maybe I'm the shortest stack now at this table, but I'm still going to go for Jack-3 suit and Burt. Giraffe ganger, 10-6 offsuit. Look, against this guy, this is probably dominating him. <laughs> Neither player really flopping anything here, which means aggression is going to take it down for being boozled. And uh, really important for him to pick up a hand because it's been a little while. Next Ooh. round, he gets pocket kings. This would be the wrong moment for Beard Stevens to go for another one of his three bets. Like, that's a nice thing, though, if you've been playing. Oh, wow, he, he just lives calls. the two kings. What? This Dean Boozled, he's like, maybe they think this is weak. And it, to be fair, this would look very weak because, man, if you've been open every hand, you would expect them when he actually gets a big hand to keep opening because it would look like. And it look, Nator's thinking about making a play of 7 4 offsuit. And, man, this limp might pay off. It is going to check, though. And man, that was really close. You can see Nator's like, man, I really think Bean Boozled's got nothing. I don't know, though. I feel like a guy who's like raising so much, the moment they start calling or limping, I'm almost like, oh my god, like they're sitting on a monster. I know that's amateur logic, but it does, like, I don't know. It turns out to be true more often than not, in my opinion. I gotta say, though, if I have pocket kings and this is the flop, queen, jack, eight, I do start getting a little bit worried. I'm like, ugh, three-handed, you know? If it's just heads up against the big blind or something, it's not too bad. But in three-handed, you're gonna have to start putting in some serious amount of chips. And he will take it down, because neither player really connected with the board. This could be a fun one. Pocket fives against ace 10 on the big blind. Yep. Uh, probably this type of hand you want to defend with ace 10 offsuit. Like three betting sure works, but uh, I think the hand has a lot of value just taking it to the flop. Mm -hmm. Neither player has a diamond, but Sean Winter does flop an open ended straight draw. And not exactly the flop you're hoping for with pocket fives. <laughs> yeah. Three and overs. Boost. Bean Boozer looks like he wants to just throw out some chips, doesn't he? Like, this is just what he does. I also okay. noticed that Bean Boozled, he likes to leave himself with even numbers, you know? Like, he bet in a way earlier where he just like, 3 2 4 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 was his stack. And he did that earlier. But it's funny. Remember that one time he bet, like, one extra chip to make his stack size all funny? <laughs> he's, just, <laughs> he's just a madman. Sean Winter will make the call. And we'll make... The straight on the river, Broadway. Obviously not the nuts because of the three diamonds, but I think it will feel like the nuts to Sean Winter with the way that Bean Boozled has been playing so far. I think the standard here is to bet. He is going to go for a minimum bet. Well, he's trying to get Bean Boozled to uh, <laughs> bluff raise him, which is pretty... I, I like the play, you know? It's against Bean Boozled. Maybe he bluff raises you, but... Um... Yeah, like you can see, like everyone's got this game plan right now. They're like, okay, how do we get Bean Boozled? They're not thinking about how to beat the other guys. It's just like, how do we get him? That's so funny. He bet one big blind on the river and he got Bean Boozled to fold. <laughs> how often do you see that? Wow, and he's trying to trap Bean Boozled with Ace Queen, man. This is... I don't think he's going to fold this flop, I'll tell you that. But Bean Boozled's got two pairs. Nice bet. 99999. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> Okay, that's an interesting turn card because now obviously Sean Winter will make a straight with a king. You might feel that that's not the worst card he could have seen. Being boosted will fire another bet, and it's a pretty big bet over half pot. 
Yeah, but now you got out to the nuts and you do make a straight bean boozles like, God damn it, what a river card. That's actually so sick. You flop two pair with A3 offsuit, an absolute garbage hand. But then the board runs out in a way where all of a sudden you don't beat much anymore and all you really have is a bluff catcher. Well, Sean Winter's tanking and at this point he's got to lead out. Is going to bet, get it done. It's just so hard to get paid off. It's also hard for your opponent to bluff at you. I personally probably would have liked to see Sean Winter still check just because Bean Boozle is a bit random and might still bet. Uh, but regardless, it was probably hard to extract any chips there. What a run out, though. That's actually pretty disgusting, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, how did the like screen win it? <laughs> yeah. On, on, on the flop, it didn't look very likely that Sean Winter was going to win that hand. I'm on the river, we did get there. Sean Winter is really starting to feel it right now as he's closing in on 5 million chips. So he's going to open things up with 9-8 suited. Bean Boozled is going to go for the 3-bet with A7 offsuit. I think Sean Winter defends the 9-8 suited. Sean Winter likes to see some flops, and here he goes. But uh, A7 is going to come out way out in front. Yeah, I think these are one of the absolute worst flops you can see if you play a hand like 9-8, 10-9, 10-8. Just gotta let it go. No need to be stubborn here. Bean Boozled wins 1.1 million chips, and that's gonna push him over 3 million again. The man is unstoppable, Nano. <laughs> uh, he's, he's just got, he's just playing so many hands. Uh, Nator, I think Queen 8, let's go, let's see some chips throw in there. Oh, wow, he folds Queen 8 off soon. Nator is just, I think he, I said what, what I said was correct. He lo he made that play at the King 4 suit earlier. It was just like, you know what? Folding was my game. It was working. I'm going back to folding. I don't like that fold of the Queen 8, but I think at this point, Nator is just like, I'm uh, I'm going to wait for top 2 and then go for it. Hmm. I like the three X here from a small blind to big blind. Like I'm not going to price you in and have the opportunity to potentially miss a flop. Being boozled with ace king suited in the big blind. At this point, he's hoping that one of these guys is going to make a move on him. Sean Winter though, king four offsuit. It doesn't really get much worse than that. Well, it does, but it's not a very pretty <laughs> hand. We'll limp. Of course, being boozled is going to raise and Sean Winter Probably still going to consider limp calling here. I know it's king four offsuit. It's a tough hand to play out of position, but if your opponent's raising four deuce offsuit, like, you know, it still plays reasonable. You got a lot of chips to play for. I wouldn't yeah. fault him for at least uh, calling here. Maybe he's even thinking about limp re raising. He oh is going to go for the limp re raise. Look, let's give it to Sean Winter. This normally would work. Yeah. This normally would work. It's not going to work but this time. Bean Boozled is like, yes, this is everything I've been investing in for the last hour and 23 minutes at these final tables. He's going to go for the all-in, I believe it was, right? And Sean Winter will make the immediate fault. And he's like, damn it. That was very unnecessary, wasn't it? <laughs> the answer is yes, mate. It was. Yeah, Sean Winter's like, oh, man. I'm, I look like I had some momentum going for it. I was feeling good. Now he's like, oh, I'm back down. But he's still got a lot of blinds to work with. Yep. Obviously, at these final tables, the blinds go up by the amount of hands we play. It doesn't go up by time. You guys can see that in the top left side, we're currently playing level 33. And in 13 hands, the blinds will go up again. Good news for them is that there is no Bruno Volksman at this final table. Otherwise, we would have been at level 36 by now. <laughs> and everybody's got seven bigs. Wow, King Nator is literally just f trying to fold his way through some pay jumps right now. Um, folding King 8 is a big, big fold in the big blind, especially with this many big blinds. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really hate it because at this point, the blinds are not that high that they're truly hurting the stacks of the other players. And maybe he just feels like, man, these guys are sickles. They're very good. Why don't I just wait, you know? There's a very good chance at least one of them is going to bust soon with the way they're playing against each other. And he just doesn't want to play the super marginal hands. Well, Bean Boozled opens Jack 3 at clubs, 3 bet by the Ace 4 offsuit. Man, these are some garbage hands going, putting chips in. 
It's really fun to watch uh, Bert Stevens, also known as Giraffe Ganger, play with whole cards up at a final table here. I feel like all of us can learn quite a bit from the way that this man is playing a final table. Well, it's pretty much don't let Bean Boozled get away with what he's doing. So where is that farm? Is the farm in Mexico? I don't think it's in Mexico. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm trying to recall where he's from. I, I think... Yeah, I'm not sure. You'll, you'll have to look into it, but it's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure he's got a farm. And if you follow his Twitter, he shows him, like, feeding his his, his goats or some something. I don't remember what exactly it is. Um, but as you look that up, it is Trip Aces versus Trip Aces. Bert Stevens got Ace King. The thing is, I don't see B. Boozle folding this hand against Bert because Bert has been the one attacking him throughout this whole tournament. And it's another call. Bean Boozled does not get there. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he's Belgian, but I was like, let's double check that before I say it. But yeah, he's from Belgium. Yep. He's got a very Belgium name. <laughs> so Bert is going for three streets of value against Bean Boozled. The question is, how much can he get? 1.6 million. Can Bean Boozled fold this hand? Man, this is tough. The thing is, like, it's hard for your opponent to be bluffing here because often you have an ace. The problem is he's been battling with Giraffe Ganger the whole time. Yeah. So he might feel obligated to call down here. Uh, but it is tough for your opponent to be triple barreling this board texture against you. It's actually pretty disgusting because if the way that Bean Boozled has been playing, like normally it'd be like, this is so sick. This flop trips. My opponent keeps betting into me. But make the call here on the river. I really can't blame him for it. The way that these guys have been battling it out with each other, it'd be so damn difficult to fall three bases here. But that means that Bert Stevens will now pick up a monster pot and send himself above 7.5 million chips. And our favorite crazy Brazilian is starting to run pretty damn short. Yeah, he's ice cold. Uh, Bert Stevens is now the actual table tournament chip leader. He's got 8-5 offsuit. And, you know... I think he's going to at least defend. It's actually a three bet with eight five offs. And man, this guy is relentless as well. Man, I would I would say if Bean Boozled wasn't at this table, I'll be like Giraffe Ganger is so aggressive. But of course, Bean Boozled. <laughs> well, you know, he he's is. Kinda, he's more aggressive. But you know what? Bert Stevens got more chips. Maybe his timing is a little bit better. Yep. Obviously, he does have uh, position on him in most hands. That does help. Ace nine suited in the small blind. This wouldn't be the worst three bet ever either. He Again, go for it. Man, I just feel like Sean Winter just keeps getting these marginal hands. It's like, man, why do I always have King Jack off suit? Eight, nine suited, you know, like, why can't I have some premiums where the decision is easy? He is going to call and again, just ace high flops where he's like, God dang it, I just don't have anything. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I like the way that Sean Winter is, play, is playing. And I feel like a lot of the decisions that he's been making, they make sense. Like, obviously, there are some plays where you'd be like, okay, you should probably fold King Jack. But with the way that Bert Stevens has been playing tonight, I don't think anybody can really fault Sean Winter for making the call here. He calls on the flop as well, though, even though he had absolutely nothing. And he does make a king on the turn, but that's not good enough. Yeah, and Sean Winter, when he sees that check, though, he's like, man, I think my king is good. And yeah. oftentimes it will be good. I, of course, he should be checking and then playing the river card. Um, but if there's I, a check on the turn, I think Bert's going to think he's got the best hand. I like the call pre-flop, but I don't really understand the call on the flop. Uh, is that just Ooh. under the motto of like you don't want to be folding to all those C bets when you miss the board? Like I'm a bit something like that. Enough. Yes, as well as you got the backdoor flush draw. Uh, you know, which is reasonable. King Jack High is. It's good as he said now. He does bet the turn and is expecting to check back the river card. Um, I imagine uh, King Jack is just still the best hand. Uh, but yeah, I think he thinks also Bert Steven, man, he's been three betting way too much. Of course, he's going to see better ace high board. So it does make sense to call up the King Jack high. It's just obviously a little dicey because obviously, uh, you know, you could be drawing dead almost on the flop. I'm pretty sure that Nathan is loving all of this. He's like, all right, being boozled short, Sean Winter short. You know, if I can lock up that top two at this final table, I am more than happy. That's by far and away my biggest finish at GG Poker, 300K. You're going to be happy with that. Whoa, this is a great moment for Sean Winter to just go for it. Like, this yeah. must be an all-in, right? Like, you got to all-in here. 
I agree. This is an all in. Like, Sean Winter's not loving it in the sense that Nator is the one three betting, who's been pretty tight. But with two tens, you got nothing to wait for. Um, so it is going to be practically a re raise. And no, the thing is, Nator actually has like doesn't have to put in. it all in. He can put yeah. in 400K, see a flop, and maybe go for it. I think you right. have to call those 400k. That's 400k to play a 2.3 million chip pot. Like, but he doesn't have to put in the he doesn't have to put in the other 500k yet. That's the good thing. Yeah. I I think you always have to call. I don't think you can have a fold. You can go all in if you really want to, but you know Sean Winter ain't folding. So I feel like at this point you may as well just put the 400k in and see a flop and see if there's anything you can go with. Oh, wow, he folds. folds! Wow. Five to one. <laughs> Giraffe Ganger is like, ah, oh, dang it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess Nator is just like, you know what? Let me just save those 10 big blinds. Uh, I do think with his hand, he, he definitely was priced into at least a uh, call and just maybe hit a king or a 10 or straight draw and just go for it. Uh, that wasn't 10 big blinds. Yeah, the total stack 10 big blinds, but the call yeah. was like five and a half big blinds. Correct. It was five and a half more big blinds and five more big blinds to play with. Um, mm -hmm. Nator is just like, he was like, you know what? I made my play, but uh, you know, I just seem to play better when I play tight. Because <laughs> uh, every time he makes a play, he loses chips. Oh, uh -oh. Winter! This could be trouble for Sean Winter, who finds a queen on the button, which is obviously a monster hand. But Bert Steven has pocket kings in the big blind, and I'm expecting another three betting. I mean, Bert Stevens is three betting everything. So then I feel at this point, this is just an amazing moment to also three bet your kings. Because Sean Winter will probably just go all in. And Bert Steven is going to snap call. And Sean needs to pray for an ace. I don't believe any of the other two players had an ace, right? Correct. And uh, it is all in. And can't blame Sean Winter. Can he get lucky? <laughs> well, he needs a 10. He's got one more out now. The ace is no good. Still needs a 10. A 10 and a 10 only. And that is not going to be it. So GG. For Sean Winter, he will finish in fourth place, walk away with one hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars. But there is no stopping the Bird Stevens hype train. Giraffe Ganger, as a lot of uh, the diehard poker fans will know him, is. Uh, I'm, I'm almost tempted to say he's doing it again. No, no. <laughs> even, <laughs> even though we're three-handed, I have the feeling that he's just doing it again. This guy is honestly a phenomenal poker player. Damn. Man, I want to say, what was Bean Boozle saying? Burke, what, what are, are, are you wearing? wearing? <laughs> yeah, I think he's asking, what are you wearing? Maybe he wants to pick up his lucky pants or something like that. <laughs> well, are there poker players? Was there anybody ever known in the world of poker that always wore a specific shirt or a specific set of pants when he went to live events because he believed those mm -hmm. were his lucky pants? I feel like there is someone. I don't know. But all I know is that Johnny Chan just wears like the craziest colored <laughs> shirts every single time. <laughs> Nator with King 7 offsuit in the small blind. And I'm pretty sure that if he raises here, Bean Boozled will go all in immediately. Obviously, there's no reason for Bean Boozled to truly wait anymore. Nator has an insane amount of big blinds. Bert Stevens has even more big blinds. Oh, hey, he's showing he's it. He's got a snap cam. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Our first snap cam of the evening. His shirt said Belgium. I don't know what it said besides that, but it said something about Belgium. I'd love to see him just bring, bring out one of his goats out here or something like that. But I think uh, maybe he's he's in Mexico right now, so he won't be able to bring his his uh, livestock out. Um, but uh, yeah, th that's cool, man. Like this is like a conversation now. Like we're having fun. These two guys like were battling each other out. Now they're just kind of like talking. This is this is really cool. Oh, Aww. there's a cat. Okay, he's got some animals with him. I like it. See, I told you this is an animal lover. This is the only thing that we uh, haven't seen too much yet. People showing off their pets at final tables. <laughs> Bamboozled limping with the queens and it's working out as Bert Stevens is giving him the brand new Elky come on emoji. But this is exactly what Bamboozled wanted as he's sitting on pocket queens. I gotta say, I find the sizing pretty interesting today, Nano. I feel like it's been all across the board. But I don't Whoa. know. Whoa. Wow. Bert Stevens. Opens up. Bean Boozled, usually you limp jam with this sack size, right? But actually made a small to two queens, and he got Bert Stevens to call eights. And they're just emoji <laughs> each other. Bean Boozled's flop top set. Doesn't get much better than that. Bert Stevens <laughs> does have 
obviously a couple of back doors, right? He's got the back door flush draw. He's got a back door straight draw as well. That's a funny bet. Two big blinds into a pot of 1.3 million. And he gets Bert Stevens to commit all the chips and being boozled. Should be able to double up here if he can avoid a nine on the river. Uh, yeah, that's safe. That's safe. What? No. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> you know what I've realized, Nano? There is a uh, another bad beat factor to like slowly revealing the river card. Let's say you need a king or a queen, and your opponent, uh, let's say like he has he has pocket jacks, but he needs one of the last two outs. And then you see that the final card is paint, and you're like, ah, I'm safe, you know, because seven out of nine cards are good here. And then it's a jack, and I'm like, no, how is that possible? You know, it's like paint is supposed to be good for me. Like, come on, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I hear you. I hear you. And um, it does look like Bert Stevens was running away with it, but... Uh... Bean Boozled has now doubled up, and that's the one guy who can really just drive things crazy. You run up a stack or maybe bust out still. Um, blinds are up. Yeah, this, this is this is getting intense now. Yeah, great job by Bean Boozled. He was a, a bit more patient the moment he became proper short. Found a couple hands, obviously. Uh didn't do it with nothing like finding queens three-handed is always nice flopping top set is even better but he played it very well because maybe see if he does just shove pre-flop there's a very good chance that bert stevens doesn't call so he absolutely got the absolute most out of his queens and that's kind of what you mentioned before with the jacks if you're very short like you don't just want to shove those hands because you do kind of want to double up like yeah it's a bit scarier but you do want the chips with the hands that are that strong wow what is happening yeah. over here I just a three bet from Nate. To, to, every time Nator bluffs, it doesn't work. He's thinking, man, why do I bluff? Because I'm just losing chips every single time. Uh, but yeah, being boozled is like, you know what? He spent the whole tournament being so crazy that he got the action of those two queens against the eight seven offsuit that he deserved, right? Like, because no one else would ever get that much action against 8-7 offsuit, right? Like, so mm -hmm. you got to give it to Bean Boozle. He, he, he earned it. He played the long con. He's like, let's play as crazy as I can in the first hour. And then when they all generally believe that I'm always crazy, let's actually get a couple hands. A7 suited in the small blind. Seems like a good raising hand to me. This is going to limp. He's like, you do the raising for me. <laughs> Bert Stevens does pick up a gut shot. Obviously, being boozled in the lead right now with top pair. But a yeah, couple of backdoors like available as well. Bert, probably call here in position. He's thinking about whether he can get away for a raise. Mm -hmm. um, but he is going to raise. And of course, being boozled is going nowhere with top pair, top kicker against, against this opponent. I would actually like to see Bean Boozled race here as well, because this is a very risky board. Yeah, I love the play. I'm generally a fan of the play. Protect your top pair. Top pair is good here more often than not, but the turn and river can change a lot of things. That's already a big pot for him as a short stack. I love it, Nana. Yeah, I was going to say, nor I think the standard was to call, but you made a good point. The turn and river are very hard to play out of position. Like, what's a good turn and river? Like, literally just a seven or the ace. ace. But how, like, yeah. that doesn't happen. That really doesn't happen too often. Oftentimes, another straight comes. Straight card comes out over cards. So, yeah. I think you just kind of like you got to close your eyes and just seal the deal. Um, and Nator. The thing is, Nator has been. Every time he's three bet, it hasn't really worked. And now he's got two kings. He's thinking, please make this work. And now he just picks up the the rays and the blinds. He's just like, God, my timing is terrible. So many oh. kings, by the way. Like, just when I said, I feel like we didn't see too many monster hands. I feel like we've seen pocket kings like seven times or eight times <laughs> without exaggeration. Nator with pocket nines, which is why Nanonoka went, uh oh. Uh, he might feel like this is a must tree bad hand, but bad timing again, Nano. I mean, uh, and again, uh, now he's made it even bigger. So Last big. time he made eight, 900k or 800k, and at this yeah. point, he's got to feel super committed with two nines. Oh, uh, I think Nator is just like, look, if I make it bigger, they definitely won't play back at me. <laughs> There's the all in for the oh. two kings. And... 
man. Oh my god, and oh he calls god. immediately as well. Kings against nines. Nator came into this final table as a chip leader. That's a horrible flop. He's got one out. Oh. Now he's got four outs. An eight or the last remaining nine that is not allowed to be a heart. But the river is an ace, and that is going to do it for the man who came in as chip leader tonight. He will walk away with $228,000, but it's got to sting a little bit, Nano, because it was going well. It was all going according to plan. Finishing third has to be a tiny bit disappointing. That, that's that's some frustration there, I think. I think he, he played that hand way too fast. Uh, yeah. Unnecessary, especially against guys who are just battling it out. But he still get top three. It's still a pretty good result, given, you know, he was, like, kind of, like, trying to fold out everyone. I think he should have continued his game plan uh, and not leave it up to to just a hopeful, hopefully they got ace-king type play. Um, but it is down to these two guys. I feel like it, it should be these two guys battling out heads up, right? Yes, Burt Stevens got the massive chip lead on Bean Boozle, but... If there's someone that can spin it up, it's going to be Bean Boozled. And uh, I, this Ooh. is going to be a fun one. It's already going to be a big pot. <laughs> what a turn card. Bert Stevens makes top pair, but Bean Boozled makes the second not flush draw. Obviously, it is a paired board, but I don't think that's going to slow him down. A king high flush heads up. That's going to feel like the nuts. The seven is kind of a scary card. Because obviously now you're like, oh, if he has a seven or an eight, he does have a full house. I hate to see these kinds of rivers if I'm sitting on a flush. Wow. Yeah, but it does get paid off. Uh, I like the small bet because it's so hard to get paid off by worse if you bet too much bigger. Just hope for some crying calls. And, uh, you know, it. Bamboozle's got 50 big blinds despite being out chipped three to one. Yep. But... I, I know I've said this before. I don't feel like this is going to be a very long heads-up match. I'd, ex I'd actually be surprised if we make it till the break. And I'm not <laughs> even sure that Bert Stevens is going to win it. But with the way that these guys have been playing, these pots are going to get big so quick. You know, you've said it hours ago. It's personal between these two. They love three betting. They love four betting each other. Uh, this, is, this is not going to be a grind for like one big blind, two big blind. Like, no, we're going to see multiple million plus pots. And I feel like it's going to be over quickly. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. These guys are probably love uh, bluffing each other, going for big value, over bets. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. Um, we, a lot of our heads up matches in these Super Millions have been super fun to watch. Uh, and there's a lot of history going down right now between these two. Well, Bert Stevens sitting on Trip Kings, being boozled, sitting on absolutely nothing. I wonder if Bert is going to check one more time. Since Bean Boozle did check the turn, it's pretty likely I, that he doesn't. I have do much. think he should bet though, like try to get called by a queen that's just going to check back that river card. Um, so he did try to get that value. Don't you think a queen would bet the turn though? Mm, no, not necessarily. I think I think some okay. guys do check back the turn, especially like no kicker. It does make sense for a queen to be a bit passive. All right, means that Bert Stevens will extend his lead. $393,000 for the winner, 300k for second place. It's been uh, very entertaining to watch these two poker nerds duke it out with each other all night long. Does feel like a little bit of an unfair fight at this point. But last week we had probably the craziest heads up match we've seen in 15 weeks of the High Roller Super Millions. And we've had a couple of great ones before, but last week was just beyond ridiculous. It never ended. It never stopped. It kept swinging back and forth. One point, one guy was a 5-1 to one chip leader, then the other dude was a 5-1 to one chip leader. Back to uh, Bruno being a 5-1 to one chip leader. It didn't stop. Dude, that they was also a good match. Yeah, it was a great Oh, match. man, like, I, I want to talk about, the, like, this check raise from Queen 4. My God, this, he's got almost nothing. Um, but, yeah, we, we've had some good Ooh. matches. This is this is nasty, right? It's oh my over. god! It's over. It's an over. It's a three bet insta yeah. ship of King Jack Bert Stevens, forty four big blinds. He's going he's for an emoji call. or something. He's got to call this. I mean, it is a big shove to be fair, right? Because if you mention it in big blinds, yeah, but yeah I think he's going to make the call. Ace Jack suited against King Jack offsuit. If Bean Boozle doesn't find a king here, he's in all sorts of trouble. And that flush is uh, already on the board already as well. But he's holding the king of spades, so he still has three outs. But that's not a king. It is all over. Giraffe Ganger is going to take 
This edition down of the High Roller Super Millions, Bert Stevens walks away with $393,000. Massive shout out to Bean Boozled, though, for making this an incredibly entertaining final table. But this time, Nano, we were right. This heads up match, it was never going <laughs> to last long. The way that these two guys have been playing against each other over the last one hour, 45 minutes, there was just no way that this was going to be a one hour heads up match. Yeah. Um... That was actually much faster than I expected. I expected, you know, at least five to ten more minutes. Um, but, you know, Bean Boozle was like, let's just go for it. King Jack offsuit, just slash it all in. Uh, that <laughs> was that was so fun. Let's let's do a little recap. So what happened throughout this final table? We had a well, bunch we had of the short stack stacks, tournament. Right? We had the short stack tournament, man. <laughs> let's start off tournament. with the short stack tournament. <laughs> well, before the short stack tournament, there was four micro stacks. They had less than ten big blends. Then what happened? Helium had the two queens against Nator, decided yeah. to slow play, try to outlast those short stacks, got super punished, became a short stack. So we had a five-man tournament, um, five-man mini tournament in the nine-man final table. Um, and it was just everyone folding and being boozled was opening every single hand, but he was like in fourth or fifth place. He wasn't doing that well himself. And then Giraffe Ganger's like, no, I'm not having any of this. I'm going to three bet you. And then he was four bets of King Six Offsuit and ships and all sorts of Those two guys were playing so crazy. There was a key hand uh, that happened when there were still like nine or eight players left. It was Bean Boozled three betting that eight five offsuit from the big blind against Giraffe Ganger's under the gun. H Jack suited. It was a bet, bet on six four, do six. River card was what? Another four, rainbow. And it was a three-minute tank from Bean Boozled, and he bet a third of the pot, and Giraffe Ganger let it go. It was an amazing hand. I think that was uh, the best hand of the tournament. Uh, and then, you know, like, obviously, eventually all those micro stacks busted. Nator, the chip leader, was just folding his way, made a big play with two nines, lost it all to Giraffe Ganger. I think Giraffe Ganger played great. Bean Boozled was obviously super fun to watch, um, really crazy, but that's the thing. Aggressive guys are the guys who ship this tournament. I've been saying that over and over again. Sure, they bust out early sometimes, but the top prize is where that. Sure, maybe you want to play that micro stack uh, tournament and get an extra buy-in or two to survive next week. But the thing is, you need to ship tournaments if you want to do really well. You need to be aggressive. Bean Booz will do that, and he got top two, despite being the guy who probably, if you give those cards to a normal player, man, that, he's getting like ninth through fifth normally, you know what I mean? Um, but you know, Dean Boozle did really well, top two, but Giraffe Ganger, I think, I think he played the best, actually. He fought the guy who was being crazy, uh, was relentless, but also fought the other guys a bit. Uh, I, I think he played great, and it was, like you said, a fast heads up. Yeah, and don't forget that Dean Boozle came in as fifth to this final table as well. So for him to finish second is obviously just an excellent performance, but the way he did it was even better than the final result. Uh, we can mention our chip leader, Nator. Obviously, it's the first time we saw him at the final table. He started off very passive. He actually didn't even play a round in the, or a hand in the first two rounds. I didn't really mind any of that because he was getting kind of weak hands. And then obviously, he did get some more chips even with that 9-8 hand against the Queens. But what I didn't like is when we started to go down to 4. It's not just that maybe his timing was a bit unfortunate a couple of times. I really felt that his sizing was all across the board. And I'm obviously not an expert like you or like these guys, but uh, I feel like he made it unnecessarily difficult and hard for himself in certain spots. And then I really don't understand that he didn't pay the extra five big blinds to pay to play a five or 2.4 million chip pot, right? With King 10 suited, sure. King 10 suited is, is not the hand that you really want to play, uh, you know, these massive pots with. But if you're already that committed, I feel like at least see a flop. I mean, maybe you flop two pair, which would have been bad for him, I guess, because the other guy had pocket tens, I believe. But if you would have yeah. just flopped a, a king, you can flop open and straight draws, you can flop flush draws. If you're getting like five and a half to one there for five extra big blinds, I really feel that was a call. I, I agree with you that I think Nator just like his timing was just off uh, throughout that final four, four handed poker and just in general. But, you know, like maybe he doesn't play professionally. Um, that's my vibe I was kind of getting from him. But, you know, a, still a top three finish is okay. But I, his sizing was all over the place. Like, you know, making it eight big blinds, nine big blinds, 12 big blinds, three bet. Uh, just yeah, like, nines was it's like 1.2 million, right? Like 1.25 million to be exact. Yeah, it was just, it just kept going up. I think he was just like, 
mm, well, that sizing didn't work last time. Let me try this one. I, I don't know. I think he overdid it. I think if he just stuck to his game, yeah, sure, it's not consistent, uh, normal for him to play. Like, he doesn't want to play too loose, you know? I think that's okay if you're not comfortable with it because he probably could have outlasted B Boozled for sure uh, and guarantee a top two spot. And the difference between like ninth and eighth is not much, but the difference between third and second is a lot. 70k as well. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's okay. He did all right still. Yeah, but it's yeah. all about Giraffe Ganger and uh, it was cool. He's had a he had a good Elky emoji game. He had a snap <laughs> Everyone cam did, game. to be fair. Yeah. Everyone did. Yeah. Everyone did. Um, snap cam game, of course. And uh, you know, he, he the guy lives on a farm. Okay, he's got a bunch of animals. He's loving life. He doesn't need to win more money, but he loves poker. He loves the competitiveness, and uh, you know he takes care of his animals. He's a really cool guy. I think you should guys should try to find him on twi Twitter. He's somewhere out there. Um, I'm and just very chill. And yeah, you look it up. He, he's just this. He's living the life. Um, you know, and he doesn't need the money, but he doesn't. He also doesn't need like fancy stuff. Like he's just happy, content where he's at, and uh, that's what you need to do. Twitter.com slash giraffeganger7. So G I R A F G A N G E R 7. That is a Twitter handle that you guys can find giraffeganger on. The champ of tonight is $393,000 richer. Perhaps all the animals are getting an extra feisty meal, you know, <laughs> some nice steaks. Who knows? Well, Nano, that was already it for today. Uh, I think a pretty fun final table. Obviously, we had the Twitter contest as well. This is an ongoing thing. I once again had like 200 mentions all of a sudden. The people out there who guessed the uh, Ace Jack suited of spades, congratulations. Should be able to uh, win a nice little cash prize. And obviously, all the action will continue on this channel on Thursday, Nanonoko. I will actually be doing a GG takeover on this channel, so okay. I don't know. It's going to be... What does that mean? Tell, what does that mean? Tell me. It basically just means that I will be streaming on this channel. So I won't be streaming poker on my own Twitch channel, but I'll be streaming on this channel. I don't even know what I'm going to do yet. Obviously, we're going to play some tournaments, right? I'm going to try to have an epic run. Uh, maybe we'll play some cash games on the side. Basically, I'm just going to try to make it a fun evening of poker over at the GG Poker official channel. And then, of course, on Saturday, the Beat the Pros event always takes place. I highly, honestly, if you don't have that much time to play poker, but you like playing poker, the Bounty Builder, $210, 7 p.m. Central European Summertime on Saturday. I think it's a really fun one. Kevin Martin, you mentioned him. He's playing in it. Uh, Easter Dems is always playing it as well. It is honestly a very cool event to uh, took it out with some of your favorite, uh, maybe poker players, but also streamers of different video games on Twitch. So that will be continuing just, as just well. Just promise me that you're going to uh, use some Elky emojis. And, and you know, do that thing. We snap cam for Nano Noko again, where the other guy's super confused. Like, what? why? What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, uh, last week I played a uh, $500 day one for one of the big uh, GG Masters events it was. And I decided to make a little snap cam video every single time we leveled up. So, you know, when the blinds reached level two, I made a little snap cam. I was like, guys, congratulations, we're at level two. Like the table must have thought I was an absolute donkey. And I was just like, this is the strategy, guys. And to be fair, I think I played all right in that event, but it didn't work out for you. I mean, uh, I think that's important though. Like poker is like, obviously, you know, people want to win money. You want to have epic runs and you want to up your game. You want to increase your knowledge. But I think it's also important to just have some fun, make some videos, send some elk emotes or, you know, the standard emotes that I really enjoy as well. And I've been having a great time. And I think a lot of people that play over at GG do have a great time. Yeah, um, definitely agree with you. Um, it was, it's been fun, and love, it wasn't the big names we were expecting, but it definitely delivered today. Yep, and that means that that is going to do it for us tonight. We'll be back same time, same place next week. Of course, this event always takes place on the Sunday evening, and then we play down to the final nine, and that is what we broadcast on Tuesdays. Of course, throughout September and October, there is an insane amount of actions running over GG Poker as well. You can do exclamation mark September or October in the chat. But there are always daily leaderboards in Omaha, in No Limit, in Russian Fold, in All In, all in and Fold. We've got it all. There's so much to read on about it. And maybe you can even gain enough points to get one of those new fish buffet spins. I gotta say, Nano, I've been trying, I've been grinding, but I still need quite a few points. <laughs> but uh, we'll make the best of it. Any final words before I close it out? See you next week, same time. All right, guys, take care. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the poker and good luck at the tables. Good night.